All right, hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? How's it going, FS Gamer? How's it doing, Aaron? Looks like somebody else is in here, but it has yet to speak. So uh, let's read through the chat really quick. Yep, glad to be live again. How's it going? All right, so uh, gonna be working on Triton a little bit here. I just uh, released the update video so you can go ahead and watch that for update news. Not too much going on there, some bug fixes. And uh, I think they're mainly spending most of the time getting ready for the uh, Space DLC, which will be out in four weeks, so that is good. 
So we're going to work on Triton. I have a episode of Career Build Series I still have to finish editing. That will come out tomorrow. And so Triton got put back in the workbench so that we can do some work. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. So need to update some things on Triton here. So do a bunch of build work around. Got to use the new cab over in the uh, Career Build Series episode there. So that is in, which is fun. What is this? Why is this all? Oh, okay, that's a sensor. That would be why. All right, that makes sense. Try to put like systems together. There we go. All right, and this is where the connection chain is broken here. So uh, that's a light that needs to go there. Let's see what else we have here. We'll connect that right off there, I think. That will do, I believe. All right, good. So that is hooked up. So that's not been hooked up for a while. And then we'll look at that LiDAR up there. Horns. I don't think the horns are really connected to anything yet, but uh, we'll do that later. Don't really need the horns right now. A little bit of a sneeze there. All right, let's uh, start looking at the panel here. So VTOL is uh, doing well. VTOL is up and running. And so that is in the uh, tomorrow's episode of the Career Build Series. Why the floor is black? When did that, when did that happen? Okay. Some of the floors turned black. Did I do a color swap at some point? Let's, let's reload this. Because I don't think I... I don't think I did it. This version is the one in the world that didn't have black floors. I don't think. I guess maybe it did. Okay. That's no fun. I gotta fix that. All right, let's go back to the autosave. That's ugly. That um, bunch of stuff got. Um, where's the autosave? Oh, whatever. Screw it. Go here. Uh, that's uh, funky. That the floors are all black. I don't know when that happened. Oh, uh, it's probably these. I think these got color swapped out. So that's probably what it was. Uh, dare I do this? Let's try it here. I don't think I have that much black on this build, so we can actually probably color swap it out. Kind of a pain, but yeah, let's see. It, uh, it's all that. It was white that I think got color swapped out, so. I don't know when that happened, man, but that's a pain. Yeah, let's leave it there, and then I have to hand fix it. Not the end of the world. That's a pain. I don't know when that happened. Especially this build being this complicated, I really don't want to go back and have to screw with it. So, all right, lights are rehooked. We'll, we'll do these later. Lidar can just hook up to this for now. All right, uh, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of painting. Not the end of the world, but not exactly the best either. Um, we can do a bunch of bucket. I try not to bucket too much, but uh, we're gonna do it because it's gonna be a lot of work if I don't use the bucket. So. Problem with the bucket is it colors things I don't want to, and then I end up spending a ton of time going back and fixing it because it does the entire plane, and I'm not a huge fan of that because then I have to go and I find like if this is in the plane, it would color a pipe or something stupid like that, and that's just a pain. So not a huge fan of that. So what is this? Looks good. Okay, that is. Yeah, see, like that is all in the same plane. This stuff gets colored in the same plane. That's usually why I don't like doing it. So, but we shall until I figure out what the hell get everything fixed. So, check and make sure I'm not putting it, if it's screwing up any other colors. But here's the pad for the Build Challenge Golf. It has the simulator simulated pad. I just pretty much cut this off and painted it. Um, people are not wanting to build within the dimensions. It has to be within the dimensions or it's not going to work when I try to put it in game, so. Uh, let's see. What else does this need? Uh, fuel, let's work on that. I got distracted by fixing, the, what the hell? No, all this wall is black too. Ah, this is a pain. All right, I got to fix all this at some point. The colors got, got all screwed up. Uh, let's check how many fuel tanks I have. I think I have four fuel tanks. I have no place to show me fuel. So here's Fuel tank one, two. Uh, this fuel, this is water at the lowest level. Then this is fuel. 
So I have one, two, three, and four t uh, fuel tanks in there. So I need to, what are you there? Just my controller, okay. So this should all be fuel. All right, these all, yep. So these are my fuel tanks. I need four tanks. And so they're all about ballasting the ship as well. So they're gonna go right next to the ballast system. Let's see. Fuel, port bow. Okay. Be a dial, and no clue how big this is going to be. Fuel, starboard bow. Yeah, I think we'll do gauges. Fuel port stern and fuel starboard stern. Okay, gauge four, four, uh, three rather. All right, good. And let's, uh, of course, I didn't fix this one. Gauge, and then these will be. Like, so much got colored black. I don't know when I did it, but it screwed everything up. Um, not a huge deal, whatever. Uh, what trade? Additive. All right, so that's just color code. So this is all my water ballast, and then this is my fuel ballast there. So trying to keep like systems. Nice thing with a ship this big is it's easy to just, you know, make a microcontroller for each panel. Oh, God damn. Didn't mean, really didn't mean to do that. Okay, there we go. There we go. Bingo, bango, bongo. Symmetry's off. That is beautiful. Okay. All right, so engineering panel there is good. differentiation here. I guess they were symmetrical, I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to just do symmetry on them. Unless I knew they were symmetrical. But they are. This is symmetrical. Or better. 
All right, so I got that fixed so far, at least up here. Let's read some chat. So we're mercifully, we didn't screw up too much down here, so that's good. Alright, so I think it's pretty good so far. Let's see what we need here. Alright, so electricity should be hooked in the mast. Added fuel, need to make a micro for that. So I have a gift for getting sidetracked, so I have to kind of keep an eye on that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we will... Fuel tanks, okay, it should be, what do we have, four tanks and a reed, so, make it six. I'm trying to think, do I have any sort of fuel management system? I don't think I do, but we'll work on that later if I need it. So let's do composite, output. Panels, okay. One, two, three, four. Four fuel tanks. There's four fuel tanks, four ballast tanks. This is um, port bow, uh, starboard bow, port stern, starboard stern. Okay. Uh, I'm going to convert them to... What are they running in ships? I'm trying to see what units is common. I kind of like gallons, but, um, wow, this is the worst website I've ever been to. Same website. Okay, I'm never going there again. That's just brutal. It's a brutal website. Do gallons. Screw it. All right. gallons these connected they are okay good let's go right to right there don't hang up game okay starboard bow I'll find this tank while I'm in the belly here so fuel tanks are the highest points so we'll go there I should have grabbed this one while I'm here. So, um, right here is the port bow, port stern is coming in here, and then we have starboard stern right here. Starboard stern, 
Alright, and then we'll copy this. So let's go down here into engineering and see. The panel is supposed to be not necessarily identical, but have all the same stuff on this panel as the upper panel. So I still need to do ballast. Um, let's see where I want to do it. That's electricity. We can do ballast fuel there. Okay. Grab a bunch of this here. Have equal readouts on engineering panel as we do in the bridge there. Probably want the let's see. I have a controller in here too, I do. So I want this control unit there too, so we'll just set that in as well. Okay, put a duplicate control unit. Don't need to do it right now either, we can do it later. I think we'll move ballast up here. That way I can put the control unit in right next to it. this okay and then where the hell do I want fuel uh, let's see fuel can go right here is fine for now we can always move things around okay, so that is in there and then let's grab this This one hooks up down here. All right, good. So we get equal readout on that. Check the electricity. So that would have got screwed up. So. All right. So that is now set up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's uh, give it a quick spawn. We'll check a couple things over here. Yeah, I'm liking this music. This is uh, probably my favorite synthwave uh, royalty free, like three hour thing. It's nice to have the long span. I'm glad you'd like it. The volume okay? So, the. We have. So, this is full. So, we have 82,000 uh, gallons, not even liter. Uh, nope, 8,245 gallons in port bow. 8245 and then 15,000 so we're talking 30 uh, 46 plus thousand gallons um, currently sitting in uh, Triton so that's some you know somebody was talking about oh uh, you know they're afraid of lifting up Triton with their VTOL it's like you're not lifting up Triton with a VTOL I've got I've got like 500,000 pounds between water ballast and and uh, and fuel ballast in here, so you're not picking it up. It's not some wave ship that somebody built that doesn't have isn't realistic. This is this is ballasted. <laughs> Plus, it has weight blocks for days. It this thing's probably you know nearing a million pounds. It is not light. Um, let's go ahead and turn on my lights. So I check the electricity on that. Hopefully, that's up and running now. Uh, still not running. All right, so let's see what the hell that's about. I have infinite electricity on too, so it's not an electric connection if it's they're still not lighting. So check see what the hell is up. Why these aren't lighting? You gotta be kidding me. I, okay, I missed one light. Okay, I was like, I knew I hooked these up. to find this mast anchor I don't know what bow mast top is 
Bow mast forward needs to be this one. Alright, so you need to see what's up with this and why this isn't running right. So it appears that it's actually a um, light tower. Why does that go to light tower? Uh, two indicator panel. Okay. Okay, so that's the indicator, and then this here should be reading right here, light tower. Okay. Let me check the numbers. It might be the numbers are off. Let's see. So, all right, this is the one I want here. So we have, let me write some numbers down. All right, so let's see, we have, let me make sure they're not daisy chained first before I write down the numbers and then realize I don't have the right numbers. Okay, so that's not daisy chained, perfect. So I can run single digits off these. So push arrow button. Okay, so this is um, light mode increase. That is the current mode. Okay. This can't be, no, that can be three. That's tilt mass. This needs to go. So I have a different mass tilt system on here now. All right. So we're talking one, two, and three, essentially. Okay. One, two, and three. And it is connected. So let's see. It is connected. Okay. Where is it connected? right here okay so that is light tower all right so light tower one and three that should be correct toggling at increment one up to nine okay it's not reading out correctly so i have to fix that Hmm, why are we not getting proper lighting is the question. One. Those are all ores. That's fine. As you can see, this is pleasant. As you can see, this is pleasant. All this grapple. What is that? Bowman's top forward. Okay, those are the ones I have to work on. And where's my readout? Right here, light tower. Okay, so constant one. Floor X divided by Y times 10%. Channel 2, that's correct. Light tower. Okay, so that should be running. We need to figure out why the hell these lights aren't coming on. Yeah. So 1 is up counter. Up counting 1, reset, enable, 0 to 9. Make sure it's merged. It is. Okay. Probably because I'm not reading into it. Uh, nope, that's fine. Reading out. Okay, let's uh, test that out. Yeah, I don't know if I've uh, really... I don't think I have anything currently that I use a 5x5 five five on. I pretty much run threes. Like, this ship is, ma you know, max size of the normal bench and it's around threes. You know, eight threes. Uh, let's go up. Yeah, I'm digging the new floor color. I want to take a little walk through, check the floor color out. Okay. So see, this isn't lighting up. That could just be a backlight mode. Let's check. That should just be top mass lights. I'm getting nothing. Just frustrating me. I don't know why this isn't working. So, okay, so light switch is true. You know what it is? When I did the color swap back in the day, they're they're all they're all screwed up. They all have the wrong additive paint, which is absolute misery because 
Nope, see, they're showing right in the editor here. It's the These whites aren't showing right. Okay, that's fine. That's less of a pain than I thought because I was afraid I was going to have to find out which ones are white and red again. I don't. They're um, just the whites got screwed up. That's actually really helpful. Oof. That saved me an absolute ton of work because that would be night a nightmare. Okay, so this is definitely not forward white there. Bow mass forward. Yeah, that's definitely not that because it's red. Alright, so that's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be here. Let's go. I think I, I don't know if I'm going to leave these black or not. I kind of I kind of like the contrast, but I just want, didn't want it black on the sides there. Back is fine. I want the mask to be the same color, and then they can, we can mask off the uh, light frame with with black is fine like this for a contrast color. This one needs to be white. Okay. So that looks like that was the issue, so that's actually not all that bad. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, they burn fuel pretty well, but, um, you know, you need to think about it. You're going to you know, it's still profitable, and that's kind of the thing, is you don't need insane profitability, you just need to be profitable, you know, and as long as you're making more money in game than you're burning, then you're good, you know. It's not that big of a deal if you're uh, burning up a lot of fuel. Put the mast up, and then this needs to have the backlight on, so. So we're missing this white light here. Needs to. I think I need to fix this. No, that's that's the amber. So what the hell is the white? Oh, it's the front white. It's these double fronts. Okay, we're good there. We're good there. Um, so I, I kind of I dig the black on these these exterior lights, but these I'll cut them. I I don't know. And it gives a little contrast. The mast is all monochromatic. The ship's pretty monochromatic. It's based off a real ship, so let's see if I can find the real ship. There's towing. Towing with an extra white. I don't have, so I need to check on that. I should be having an extra... Is that rear? I can't tell. Rear white? No, not necessarily. That's top white. Okay, that's towing with the top white. That's all dependent upon the uh, how long the cable is. There we go. Red, red, white. Red, red. Missing the white. I'm missing the white. So I need to fix that. Okay, it could be stern white. I thought we are supposed to have a forward white too. It might be this one here. It needs to come on, but I'll check that later. I just want to make sure we have the main lighting I need just for operation. Okay. Red over red. Good. All right. Go ahead and I need to see why this isn't backlighting. Backlight signal is probably just not getting the signal. It's getting a signal. Uh, you know what it is? It's got to be that friggin' color again. Got to be colored black, probably. Everything got swapped out, which is really obnoxious. There we go. That'll be it. Okay. What is this light supposed to be here? Mast stowed. Okay, that will come on. So when the mast is down, that green light comes on to tell me it's good to go through a bridge. So when I'm sitting in my seat, I can just look over my shoulder and see the green lights on. I know, okay, I can go through the bridge. Mast is all the way down. So. Alright, so that's a little bit of progress there. Uh, I want to work in the fuel. Uh, so, if you look here, I have a fuel port and a hose here, here. I have one here. That's what this is all about. And then I have one up here for fueling craft up here and so this needs to i need to double check this all ties in so that i can refuel all of my vehicles from 
Brighton's diesel supply. So it goes down here, comes out here, goes all the way down to this pump, which then goes into, okay, so it draws out of this rear tank here. These, the fuel tanks auto ballast already, so they maintain ballasting there. So this here is drawing for the pad and Remora's uh, fuel needs. Okay, these, I need to verify these. So that is here. There's a pump there. Currently, I have no way to refuel Triton, so I need to fix that. So that comes down here. And that is, okay, so these each take from their associated side. That's good. Why I hate color swap is like that completely like color swap so much random crap that I don't know have to deal with. Really a pain. Like see like every little bit here, and I really don't know how far back that was, so I don't want to go and screw with it, you know. But whatever, it's not the end of the world. It's just oh come on, dude. It's a little bit obnoxious. Look, camera is like ultra flicky today. I don't know what the deal is. Starting to look pretty good, I think. Yeah, see, up here is all screwed up. Between bucket and color swap, it's sometimes caused me a lot more, a lot more aggravation that's worth. All right, so those are plumbed in. I'm shocked these didn't get screwed up. All right, so those are plumbed in. I need a way to fuel Triton itself. I have no way to fuel Triton currently, so I need to do that. I was going to add like an elaborate fueling system for Triton. I'm trying to think how do I want to do it. I'm thinking maybe centralized. Could do it in this little room here. Let's work on this room here. So this is stores some of my equipment for the or the crane, it's like crane equipment storage here. Okay. I think we're gonna put refueling on this. We can do up to three. I don't, I don't refuel that often. Generally, I pull it back in the workbench because it, you can only hook the one hose up in most of the locations, so it would take quite a while. Let's see. I have some room on the stack here, but we'll deal, have to deal with this. Let's see how I want to do this. butt up against each other. What's this here? That is as a candidate right there for it. So can I put a refueling panel in here, I think, hopefully. I get kind of picky with some of the stuff, so. Let's do it right here, maybe.
your chat in a second. Can't label these, which is kind of annoying. It's gonna be for def. No, diesel, diesel exhaust fluid is, I just use jet fuel, so that goes in there. And that, uh, that'll give me the liquid I need for uh, the def system when I eventually put that in. Essentially, it just, it tells the engines that if it doesn't have def, they need to shut off, and uh, like they would in real life. So you just put jet fuel in there, and for every, it counts the fuel, and so for every 50 gallons you use, it dumps a gallon overboard. That way it gives you uh, gives you what you need. Uh, that's pipage there. Okay, what's that? It's gonna be a pain to get stuff through here. I'm kind of tight on space. Okay, we can make this work. All right. All right. So it's just the biggest thing is getting Triton fueled. So the top is Triton's fuel. Probably actually want to go here for Triton's fuel right there. What was that that I just deleted? Okay, nothing. Good. I have symmetry on, of course I do. Abysmal that is. Um, let's see. I can rebuild it quickly. I just need to not screw up that other side. Um, back here. I need to back it out because I don't, any damage I did on this side I need to undo. So. Really need to hook up a better fueling panel, but for now I just want something like they'll auto level. I just need something to be able to give Triton fuel if I get low on fuel and I need to be able to refuel. So that's the main deal for now is that. And we'll hook Def up later. I don't need to do that. I just want a couple things that I was noticing making the career build series video for tomorrow that uh, Triton's going to need. So. Try to do them a little at a time as I go. All right, good. So that is now in plumbed. Kind of funny. Game is lagging right now. All right, it's lagging wagon. That's there. It's not going to like that. Let's 
could just theoretically hook in south of that, but I don't want to. I kind of want to. Check chat in a second here. I'm just kind of busy doing this. So we'll just go for now into this one tank, and then I will uh, screw it from there. Just need some way to put a little bit of fuel in this, if need be, and then it will level itself out. There we go. All right. All right. So we're plumbed up there. We'll pump this one tank, and then from there on, it would should uh, auto level it, and then I'll fix it from there. So. All right. So there's a little bit of just a refueling work for Triton for now. That's on there. Def and uh, ground power I'll do differently. Depends on the system. Some def systems shut off altogether. Some don't. I don't know if a bunch of the ships limp or not. There is limp mode and then you know I have to see, but uh, I get I get ample warning. It will warn me. Plus, I have parasite craft here. I can just fly away and go get uh, go get more def. Generally, it doesn't become a problem because I have to burn enough fuel to uh, you know the need to refuel the def as well. All right, there we go, and then I hook those up, I think. Let me check, see if I hook this one up. Yep, okay. So that's in. Let's see where we're at here. Making progress. Progress is always slow on this ship. Just takes forever to get anything done. So that's looking pretty good so far. What else do I need? I need to get rid of some microcontrollers here. This is Remora's panel. Space in the stack. Put it. Try not to get it too far away from, so that I don't want the lines. This starts to slow down the editor if the lines get too far away. So I don't want to get too far away. Okay. Try to clean up some of this crap that I have hanging around. So this is my seals for that. So let's move this, cut you. Where's my center point? Right there. spot in here somewhere we do we put it right in the center shaft there no no baby shark try not to annoy myself or others How does the 3x3 drive Trident? I couldn't see 3x3 getting... 
Three by three, I have uh, two eight three by threes. I go about 18 knots in Triton, 19 knots, somewhere, something in that neighborhood. These are the motors. Two eight uh, three by threes. Well, let me see what my gear ratios are. Running a three to one. And what's I'm running some I'm not running symmetrical reverse. So I thought I was running symmetrical reverse. I might have to change that out to symmetrical reverse. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not even running symmetrical reverse. Um, yeah, three to one. Uh, and engines, engines rev pretty slow. So here's the def system. Def system's right here. So it has whatever that is. Um, what are these gallons? I think these are 75 gallons of pop, something like that. So 140 gallons of def. It's not plumbed in yet. I need to plumb that in. All right. So we have the ability to. We have the ability to pump out these vehicle or to fuel. That's good. That's something I want to do. We now have the ability to fuel Triton. The lights are fixed. The floor colors are fixed. Again, I don't know how that happened. I'm trying to think what else I should be doing here. I just want to kind of get it ready for the career build series. Because, uh, you know, if you watch this episode, they'll be out tomorrow. It's, um, you know, it just gets put away so that I can do a little bit of work and I grab some fuel so that um, I can leave with it fully fueled and uh, you know so I wanted uh, I wanted uh, each each time I put it in the dock I want to do a little bit of work so it just gets progressively closer and closer to where it needs to go we could do a couple of the cameras that would be helpful I'm trying to do stuff that's actually gonna be useful and so cameras could actually be pretty helpful so this is why I hate the bucket. You know, people are like, hey, use the bucket, use the bucket, use the bucket. It's like, this is why I don't use the bucket, is I have to come back and spend all this time, like, because I, I want it all monochromatic in here. It just looks messy, and I'm not interested in the mess. And so it's like, you see all this just, like, bucket color here and there, but ship this big, you kind of have to bucket, and I hate it because I have to just go back and clean. It's like, it's better just to do it by hand sometimes. Or it could be a pain. It's all anchor stuff in there. Okay. Still don't know what I want to do with this front room here. We'll figure that out. Let's see what else do I need. All right, what was I just talking about doing? What is this about here? Let's see. Compass display. This can go inside. Bunch of this stuff is not my stuff. It needs, okay, cameras. I want to do cameras. That's the nice thing with something big like this. One of the reasons why a lot of the challenges I do small stuff is, one, I don't have the time to like look at every detail that people put in, and I want to actually like be able to go through somebody's entire build. So that's part of it. But also it's like it's a challenge to actually have to like be able to hide your microcontrollers and make some of the decisions. You know, I keep talking about like Big Man's challenge was great that you know, making that size constraint and the engine constraint, that really was a lot of fun to try to have to cram everything in there. And like, this is such a piece of cake. You see how easy it is to like, I just have a, this void under here is specifically to just put microcontrollers because you can see how crazy everything gets in here. I want to try to keep stuff close. So like all the bridge stuff is right underneath the bridge floor. So that's just easy to find. If I had them all like hidden in the fuel tanks, it'd be a nightmare to go down there and find them. So, kind of, kind of the benefit of that. How's it going there, Owl? What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, major, the pressurization update. All right, let's get some cameras going here. I have some pre-done cameras. I need to find them. So let's go to monitor. It's got to be this big, John here. That's part of that system that, um, you know, is not mine. All right, let's see. That's radar map. All right. Trying to find all my cameras here. What is that? Map viewer video, okay. 
had a bunch of cameras. I gotta find them. I just saw some of them when I was under here. They're just sitting in here. So like that is a camera here. There's a camera here. What's that? That is the medium camera. Stabilized camera in here. So these are all pre-hooked to the system. That's why they were just hidden down here. Let's see, are they actually connected up to anything? No. This one is. What do I have up here under the top? That's gimbal camera. Which feed are you going to? Uh, and then you go to feed five, input five. Okay, let's see if this camera's up and running. Just want some cameras for docking and stuff like that. So you get that done. Try just trying to do a little bit of work that I need to do to get things running here. Okay. All right, so this one is the gimbal in the front. Okay. Two is Canon, Canon. This is, what is that? This is got to be the medium camera that I just found. Okay. Okay, this is the one on the, on top there. Straighten out the the um, mast here. Play with this camera, see what it needs. So it needs to be flipped. Oh, come on. Wow, flicky camera. It just, like, sometimes it seems bad, and other times it's not bad. Jesus, right now it's brutal, man. So I want like some these docking cameras. So I kind of have to. I think where I want to put them. I want to have them kind of. I think maybe in the corners here. That could be a good place for them. Is right here, and then I can use the the angle. I could stick them. They can stick over one. There's a one overlap on here, so we could actually do that. Do the whole boat so let's go all the way to the back so we'll go there grab these cameras up problem is I'm probably gonna want to zoom them Maybe I'll do no zooms on these. Let's see, I don't want them oversized. So. That way, when I'm docking, I can turn these cameras on to see port and starboard when I'm docking. I had to make it so I don't have to go to third person. And then I can use that new gimbal angle to to angle them out so that they're at a little bit of an angle when I need them to be. Where are we at? Oh my god. Un, un mein Gott. Yeah. 
I've been want, wanting to do this for a little while, get these set up. Alright, good. So let's, uh, I need to figure out where to hook these in. Let's go ahead and spawn it and we'll play, see what channels I have, and then hook it in the system. The system here gets a little bit complex. I have to screw with it. Alright, so one is that two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Why are these the same? Okay, so three. So two is. Let's try to figure this out. Two is that port? Yeah, port. Okay, two is port. Three is starboard. So I need to plug in six and seven. So seven is port. Six is starboard. Okay, six starboard, seven port. Six starboard, seven port. Six starboard, seven port. Six starboard, seven port. Six is starboard. Let's just double check where that's going right now. Okay, good. Six is starboard. Seven is port. So there's starboard, and there's port. All right, good. So that's going to help with docking. So, for example, we're going to want to snuggle this dock. I can kind of watch a little bit better there as I'm docking. So that's good to have a couple docking cameras. For example, I can see that the stern is leading the bow a little bit, so I'm going to catch it up. I actually don't think it needs any angle. This is the correct, this is how I want to view it. Right, there we go, get the stern caught back up. Bingo, we're docked. All right, good. So that's helpful. So that uh, That's a helpful view there, I like that. do I have here? So one is still in there. Cam two, three, four. Okay. Let's check this one here. Need to raise the raise the roof for this one. This counter is not working. I need to figure out why that counter is not working. All right. How's it going there, Rasmus? What's happening? Uh, trip to Italy, that sounds like fun. Uh, it, I have a bunch of cameras already set up here. I'm just uh, setting them all up. So I have a bunch of uh, cams for all uses here. So This is still backwards. I just inverted this. Why? I'll invert the controller, I guess. So I need to drop the speed, too. Night vision. Let's try this. Yep, I have it facing the wrong direction, it's not helpful. That's better, I think. 
All right, so that's now facing the correct direction. So we have the docking cams. We have that. I don't know where I'm going to put gimbal cam. Save really quick. I haven't saved in a while. Okay. That pressurization update. I'm really looking forward to. I'm looking forward to space, but it's. You know, I'll do some stuff with space, do some tutorials, but you know. the one thing that I, uh, you know, I've always really wanted a space building game, so, you know, but, uh, you know, it's not exactly what I'm looking for, but, uh, you know, I've always wanted a space building game. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yes, you know, space engineers just isn't en enough, isn't good enough building. That's... Somebody's like, oh, just play Space Engineers. It's like, it's not good enough building. The building really isn't there. Stormark's building is so much better. Okay, I gotta stop doing what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting random crap and it's not helpful. Yeah, I can paint, but I can't cut. Yeah, again, this is like my hate for the bucket. And it's just like, I don't want all this colored in here. Nonsense colors. Part of the reason why this is all like jaggedy and weird looking in here is I literally cut whole rooms out of... Uh, the Damon uh, 2111 and stuck them in here. That's why it has uh, that's kind of the way it is. I just took entire rooms and stuck them in there. So, Alright, uh, I think we have at least the cameras that we need. I could put this on something. I don't know what I want to do with this. Kind of don't know where I want that one yet. What else do I need to functional? Ma mainly was getting the fuel going. The fuel's in there now. I've hit a couple of microcontrollers that are on the deck. Those were bothering the crap out of me. Running pretty well on all of this, I think. So let's, uh, what is this here? Fire cannon port. I don't know why that's not connected up. I connected it up. I made another one, so... Okay, these are duplicated. I just duplicated some panels for that for other camera stuff, so there's duplicates in there. Alright, let's save this up. Let's see what else we want to work on. That's because I'm stopped, and so it's reading um, it, you know, it's it's getting very quick speed changes because it's moving in in fractions of a knot so i could put a floor on that i just haven't done it yet so essentially if it's below one knot it you know you essentially you'd set it up so that if if it's below one knot it would just read zero i just haven't done it that's what that's the only reason it's flickering is the uh there's no floor on it so it's just flicker flicker all right let me do one more precautionary save. Let's go fly the chickadee around. So let's here. Let's spawn Triton. Let's send Triton off into the world. You'll see this on Career Build Series. I, uh, that comes out tomorrow. I did some flying with chickadee. So that's what the VTOL is called, is chickadee. I did a hand-drawn chickadee on there. So. Uh, let's... Te let's do some proper testing here. We'll do infinite electric off. Leave damage off until I leave the dock, as we know that it likes to blow up when we get there. So. I know some would cry, but I would love to see some, like... Again, if, if things are with a checkbox, there's really, I think, limited room to complain. You know, so it's like, I would love to see some actual survival mechanics, like food, water... 
that way for example if you have a tiny little boat or you have an airplane you're not gonna be able to carry food and water on there and so you're gonna need to stop not a big deal but you know then if you have a larger vehicle that you can store some food and water it now gives it a benefit is oh I can stay in this vehicle for a while because I don't have to stop and get food you know and that's kind of the thing that I like with that um, and then if they put it on a checkbox you know I think there's really limited room people can complain they will but uh, limited room people can complain because you can always shut it off if you don't want it you know and so um, personally I would like a little bit of that where you have to go get food and uh, water you know make desalinization which again you know the devs have year-long plans here the, they talk about they were in, working on space for years and uh, you know that's like with the animal updates you get people complaining that the animal updates were silly well it's like we don't know yet if it's silly frankly you know eventually we probably will we'll see what their plan is you know maybe it's part of a food and water mechanic maybe it's part of an animal husbandry uh, I should probably start start the engines huh you know maybe it's part of an animal husbandry thing and a farming um, DLC or n major you know they've already talked they they have a couple majors planned into 2024 already so yeah I am interested in that but I would like a little bit of a survival mechanic so that I can uh, you know give you a reason to do some of these things why is six and se oh, six and seven don't have electricity? Okay, so some of that needs electricity. All right, I should check that out. All right, let's just put the uh, Triton out. We'll launch Chickadee and we'll go land on Triton. All right. Triton's on autopilot. Looking forward as well to the new way they're going to be doing it so that uh, hopefully we can launch vehicles together a little bit more easily. So here's the there's the chickadee I drew. Not too bad. Came out all right. And then uh, tail number. I end up cutting out this little pasture seat here. Let's fix some stuff here really quick. Don't need these. I, I had to tune in the props again, so... That had some excess crap on them. Let's see if I can change this here out to not huge in the color this presently is. So. See if this shows up at all. I don't know if it will. Let's. I want to check. See if I'm trying to get as dark of a color as I can on that. We'll see. I have to fix another light on this, so let's check the lights on that. Okay, yes, that's not going to light up at all. Just leave it red, it too. It's not the end of the world if it's red. Yeah, let's just leave it red for now. I can always change it later if I'm not happy with it. Alright, what wasn't connected? Strobes weren't working, so let's see why the strobes aren't working. Look like they have electricity, so they're not plugged in right. Okay, it's probably the channel. I changed some of the channels, so let's check the strobes channel. So it is beacon nav, strobes 14. Okay, 14. Fourteen is strobes. Fourteen strobes. What the hell? Why aren't you running then? Oh, probably they got. Um, check the color on them. Could be it. Yeah, that's probably it. Yep, that's it. Okay, good. Reading some, uh, reading some chat here. Yeah, I'll have to see if they do anything like, um, you're going to need oxygen. Like, I would love it if they added that stuff. And again, 
put it behind a checkbox. I understand it's a pain to have to make two versions, you know, checkbox and uncheckbox, but it limits the complaints people can make because it's like, hey, you don't like it, shut it off. You know, so it's pretty easy, and I think that's beneficial for the devs just to do that. This thing is fast, man. This thing goes 300 knots. <laughs> it's one of my faster vehicles. How's it going there, Daniel K? Just uh, worked on Triton a little bit, working on uh, working on Chickadee. We'll go land on Triton. Uh, nope. I did. I did start building a new newer home ship for this career build series, but presently I haven't done any real work on it. It um, it's very limited. I can't do much with it, and that's kind of I built it a little bit too small, and so I can't take any containers. I can't. Um, you know, I can't put any real air vehicles on it. They'd have to be tiny, tiny, tiny. So that's the only issue. It's a little bit on the small side. The whole point was I was trying to get it in a little bit earlier. So it didn't take so many episodes to get it in. But it was causing me problems. So that's what I mean by horizontal takeoff. So if you're participating in the challenge, that is a horizontal takeoff. Take off horizontally down the runway. Taxi out. Do that. So there is Triton. We're going to start to go vertical here. So we're going vertical on the rotors. I'm just going to click on the AP. Just gives me that uh, auto hover nonsense. All right, there we go. We'll try to find Triton. There's Triton. And we'll go ahead and we'll switch over to camera on the bottom. Still have, okay, so I do need to remember I have yet to put on, that's part of the challenge golf, um, you know, necessities, is you have to put on a detachment system. I have yet to put that on this is just, all it is is a signal to tell the connectors to disconnect. So. Mine has an auto reset, and the benefit with that is after 30 seconds, it resets itself so that you can detach with just a push button. And then when you go back to kind of reconnect, you can just reconnect. Okay, there we are. Can't see Triton right now. I can hear Triton. Can't see Triton. All right, so I need to go up on the rotors. Um, you can see my speed. Triton does about 18 knots, so I have to kind of match the speed. Uh, you can see Triton in the camera down there. I'm just coming out slowly. A very slow drop rate on this. You know, it, it wants to climb too, which is like I'm not a huge fan of. I have to try to fix that to get this to settle down. Or maybe I'll trim it to a center position. See, like I have to go way down to get it to like even drop. So like I need to put my trim like there. So it's like, I need to take the trim off. So it's kind of a pain to get this to drop. It wants to climb all the time. Just try it. So that's kind of like hold the down arrow. second. Yeah. Part of the thing that made this build a little bit more complex was I'm using the up-down arrows for both collective and for throttle. So I had to put in a bunch of stuff so I could do that because I don't want to have to control it separately. It's just too much of a pain. Wow, it's a little bit flicky-flacky there. The way I'm doing the um, up-down collective is screwy right now. I need to fix it. It resets, and so that's a pain. Because I initially had it a different way, and so now I changed it. So like it's, I'm struggling to get this to come down properly. or close to where the pad is here. I just need to try to steer us a little bit. 
it wants to like reset to like a climb essentially and I need it to reset to like a hover. So that's why it pops up every time to see it like resets itself to a climb. It's really a pain in the ass actually. Gotta fix it. Uh, what are we at there? 183. We'll use the autopilot to help us a little bit. 183. So at least that will, that will hold the heading for me so I don't have to do that. And then um, go ahead and we'll tilt down the rotors just a little bit. Now we'll, we'll try to match Triton speed so I don't have to deal with that. But you see it's trying to do a steady climb. So there we go. So we're starting to speed forward here a little bit. The problem is my... My airspeed indicator won't show under 20, which is realistic. You know, eventually you get to a point and it just won't show. Uh, let's go altitude hold. I don't know. Let's do 20. Let's do 30. Stick that on there as well. Let that control itself. I need to fix that system, get that going. So and there we go. What's my new heading? Is 17. One sub five, I bet. Some five, one, some five. So yeah, I need a. That's pretty much the collective is the main thing that's screwy now, and it's because I have to try to. I'm trying to do throttle and uh, collective on it, so it it will knock out the throttle. The problem is, you know, I want to use a it as a button. And so I have to use this button while it auto resets the collective instead of smoothly changing, so it's jumpy. And because of that, I have to fix it. So. Yeah. I do have GPS coordinates on a radio reading from this, but I don't have the radio antenna hooked in. So theoretically, I can use the um, the station keeping to automatically put itself and keep itself over the center of the pad. But I kind of like the challenge of it. It's a little bit, it's just not running smooth, which is my problem, but I do like manually landing on this sucker. It's just not very stable right now because of that jumpy uh, collective. We'll fix that and we'll be in good shape. It's actually easier in the career build series when I landed on here. Being a pain right now. Wow, see it's doing the jump thing again. That sucks, man. Just did the jump, which is friggin' frustrating. All right, so that's something I need to work on. Let's see. Currently, all the doggos are just sitting in FJ's closet. The main issue I have with the dogs is they just pant constantly, and it's loud. Uh, it's whatever, the turn slip is whatever uh, Basilis just did, but not mine. Yep, challenge started. How many days ago the challenge started? Somebody started building early again, so I had to start the challenge early again. So I'm not going to be uh, doing any more lives of me working on testing the challenge stuff because people start early and cheat, so I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Uh, let's see, when did I post it? Challenge started on 9-11. Uh, so. Four days ago. And the challenge is going till uh, September 25th. September 25th is the deadline. All right. uh, let's see what we have here. So this is my issue right now, is I'm converting these for the throttle into trying to make this smooth. That's being obnoxious. Way to do this. 
this here would not auto reset if I do it this way. Fly with it like this, see how this is working for me. Offshore oil is just too much work as far as I'm concerned. Like by the time I get the ships built and everything built the way I want it to, it'd be like you know, I don't think I'll be interested in it. Just not something that interests me really. Like, I like doing the on-land stuff, but it's like going and getting the ship out there, going, then wow, I'm pumping. You know, it just sits there and pumps. just doesn't interest me. You know, I like the drilling, but just that part's just not for me. Is not interested in doing the offshore stuff. So let's go ahead and I'll pile it on, raise the rotors. This is another issue it does is it starts to throttle way up. It starts to pitch up early there and then it uh, can misbehave at times. Right. So let's see. But see, this is the issue, is when I let go, it will zero out the motion instead of smoothly fixing it, so. And those will, I'm trying to think, I want it to smoothly fix itself, I have to try to figure this out. Do an add on those and maybe do it so like what I'm trying to do is so like you can set a sensitivity on the seat, but in order for me to do my throttle I have to have the sensitivity at hundred percent. So that's a pain to, to I can't run both. And so like you see it goes and then it like tries to get itself to go back up. Which I don't know why it is. Is it because it's given it? Let's go all the way up. So it might work in vertical, vertical mode like this. See, like, still jumpy, but can I sit stationary? Okay, so they, the rotors have to be all the way up. I'm, I have to add a bunch of stuff so to cancel stuff out at certain points, but see, it goes down, and then it wants to do that jump. It's not too, too bad. Just need it, because it's canceling it out very quickly. So let's try something, see if I can't smooth it out. That's the wrong friggin' controller, there we go. It's an AP, okay. So the other thought process is this. The other thought process is this. We'll do two of these. And we'll do a function. X plus Z. And then what we'll do is one will increase. Nope. This will increase, let's see, this will decrease this. Zero will do the opposites here. And so what will happen is if I do one, it will increase my up counter. If I let go of one, it will now be zero. It will start to automatically decrease that. And then it will automatically increase this. And so what that will do is this one will read one, this one will read negative one, and that should cancel out the motion. And then that will, let's try this. 
Again, this is all so I can have the throttle working the way I want it, which is a pain. But uh, let's try that for now, see if this works. What I want. I'm just trying to get that little bit of jump out of there. We have uh, strobes on? We do. Okay, good. Uh, not a cheat's not the right word, but people keep starting the challenges early before I've announced them. And then the whole, you know, and really by all right, I should be disqualifying them for it. But, um, you know, you can't start the challenge until the challenge is started. And I have some people, they like to start early when I start doing my testing. So, you know, and then it's not fair to the other competitors that somebody's been working on their build for a week before the announcement. So... This is the second time it's happened, and so instead of, you know, twice I've thought about just changing the challenge and making it some, something else, and I said, you know what, screw it, I'll just uh, start the challenge early, and I'm not ready for it yet, and so I have to run around and do a bunch of extra work because people were, couldn't just wait until the challenge was announced. Beautiful, that fixes it. So see this system now fixes it, so it's much smoother now. So the issue with this is often what you can do with the seat is up, down is smooth, it, you change the sensitivity, and it will... Like, you'll press 1, and then it will slowly come back down to 0. And so that slow transition is what I wanted. Uh, but I need it as 1, negative 1, so it was resetting. So now, as you can see, this is much smoother now. So, so you can see it's nice and smooth. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's really good now. Nice. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to actually save it here because I have a bad habit of I'll go test it and then I'll forget to save it. So I wouldn't, you know, it's not really cheating, but people, like I said, people start early. You know, that is breaking the rules. The rules are, you know, you cannot have a build started before the challenge. And there's no real way for me to go out there and see when did you actually start this build. And so when I start seeing people building the build that I've been talking about, you know, before I even announce the challenge, you know, then uh, it gives an unfair um, it gives an unfair advantage over the competitors. It's not fair. So it's um, you know I end up starting it early. So I'm just gonna all my testing for the challenges from now on is gonna be in secret, so that people can't start early. You know, I'm not gonna talk about them. I'm not gonna ask what people would like for a challenge. It's just people start early, and it's not fair. So. But it's happened two times in a row, so it's some kind of over it now. Yep, the best way to get better at stuff is just to build them. You know, it's um, you know, that's kind of when you're struggling with a certain type of build. The best thing is just go do it. You know, and then you get better at it. Like my first couple of Etals weren't great. They work, but they're not great. This one's much better. This one's smoother. Go all the way up here. I'll work on this. Let me bring the winch up here. This light needs to move because my player my player's head hits it, so I need to put it on the back wall here. Come on. This winch is a pain because it uh, it has to be angled like that because I'm just out of space. So like the craft is turning because my head is sitting like that. There we go. And it needs to be angled because I need to get my feet through the door or else when I go to jump off I fall out into the ground. So all right, let's go ahead and where's Triton? Triton's out there somewhere. So let's start going forward. So I'll show you the, the demon speed of this thing. This thing's nasty fast. 
About 300 knots. <laughs> That's 300 knots right there. And then let's bring the prop back a little bit. I think I can beat 300 knots. I did like 302 yesterday playing with it. So. But uh, yeah, it's, it's got demon speed to it. So. Uh, there's th 300 knots, pretty good. So. Let's take this autopilot full, full off. We'll find Triton and land on Triton. So yeah, that new system's working better. I need to find Triton. Where are you at there, guy? How the hell did I miss not find Triton? The hell is it? That's one of the reasons I like the smoke on Triton. Is it makes it easy to find. I do have a uh, so I have a radio frequency on there for Triton. There it is. Uh, it's on the pad, but I I can't remember the radio frequency off the look. Yeah, fuel rate's not great at 300 knots. I burned. Oh, what I burned 20 gallons already. But it uh, it cruises at. Uh, 220 knots at max efficiency cruise and that's 400 RPM a side so what, whatever that be Four, it's like 440 I'm trying not to crash while I'm doing math here so at yeah 7.3 is its cruise and then I can go slower than that too, but you know that I, I easily go up to the Arctic and have a lot of fuel left for. I could probably make it back. Let me start putting the rotors up here. I'm doing too much at once, and it's um, trying to fly with one hand and use my calculator with the other is not really helpful. So, but I don't want this thing ultra fuel efficient either. You know, I want this thing to have to stop and make fuel breaks. It's like. Yeah, especially in game because we put things back in the workbench all the time and it gives it a full fresh set of fuel you know it kind of it's a little sucky that you know you don't really have to think about fuel economy all that much you know you need it for profitability of course but um you know it's not like you have to stop and get fuel all the time so i like having my vehicles where they need to stop and get fuel you know you have to kind of consider if you're going to run something a little bit more economical, it's like Night Owl is very fast and can do a lot, but it's uh, hungry, so it's like if you're going to go do a piddly little mission that's not going to give you much cash, it's not worth running Night Owl. It's better to run something else. Right, let's go up on the rotors here. There we go. I will snap right into vertical flight mode here in a second. I'm just... Uh, Trying to do 10 things at once here. Let's see, where is uh, Triton Tone? Triton stopped, so. But definitely it's much smoother now. Like, I'm able to control my height much better, so. Definitely better now. Yep, much, much better. I By increasing that uh, interval by 10 times on the collective, it's smooth. It's uh, faster, more responsive now. And then it doesn't jump back up. It smoothly stops. So that's uh, beneficial to keep me nice and stable. There we go. The lights finally came on. There we go. And we're attached. So... Shut the engine down. So I had to extend the nacelles a little bit so they fit, but they're damn close. So So the measurements came off of this. So this is two blocks past the back. And this one sits, um, what is that, one block ahead of the green in the thing. So this is this build is within the limitations of the challenge. So this will f this will fit for the length of build. So, uh, you know, this one, as you can see, this one, it fits on the pad pretty well. But you can see how you get much bigger than this, you can have problems. And, again, one of the prizes for winning the challenge is that you will be featured in the videos. So I need... 
to make sure I can actually land on Triton and, and do rescues with it. And so, like, uh, can I... Why can't I... It's not letting me fold this. There we go. I need to jump above it. There we go. So, like, you see, this is now within the footprint. That way I can dock and I'm not hitting rotor blades on stuff. And, um, you know, that's why the width requirement's important. You can have a little bit of an overhang. Isn't a big deal. You know, and then... You, um, you know, so that's why I wanted it within the pad. And part of it, too, is part of the challenge, again, is making something small is challenging. You have to hide your microcontrollers. You have to balance it really well. Like a big ship like Triton, I can put a microcontroller anyways, anywhere. It's not going to do anything. It weighs barely anything. But you put a microcontroller somewhere in a little build, might throw your center of gravity off. That was like big man's challenge. I put 30 weight in the front of my car, and it completely changed the handling for the better. And so it was like that was a huge part of the challenge was people were struggling with their handling. You had to move weight blocks and just like the tiniest bit of weight somewhere else in the car could completely change the handling and it made it a challenge. And that's what I like is to actually you know, have something be a challenge. You know, a couple people, they didn't read the rules and they went to start building and they built way too big or they built with like engines they weren't allowed to do. Again, you know, it's a challenge. Everybody has the same rules and that's the fun thing is to see what everybody's going to do with the same set of rules. So I'm shocked how good <laughs> that came out. <laughs> that was just me hand drawing it, looking at a picture. <laughs> that came out pretty good. I'm not that great of an artist. So, but, uh, so this is going to be a cool vehicle. Like, you see, 300 knots, you know, like I was saying, I can't keep 300 knots forever. It will overheat eventually at 300 knots. Uh, once I get down to, like, 260, 250 knots, it won't overheat anymore. But that is actually realistic. Like, if I took the Ember 145 and I took off at max takeoff, which you almost never take off at unless it's an emergency, um, you would burn the engines up after a minute. So you can't keep it at max takeoff for more than one minute. Uh, you'll burn the engines up. And so, like, people think it's unrealistic to have to bring your throttle back. It's like, no, that's, that's what happens all the time. You know, there are... Uh, large airplanes, like even large reciprocating airplanes, you don't push the throttles all the way up. You go up to like, say, 90%. If you go over 90%, for example, you might cause um, excess wear and tear in the engine. And so that's not something you want to be doing. And then if you go to 100%, you need to do an overhaul. And so you could get in a situation like that where if you have to do an emergency go around, you might need an overhaul if you push, the bo push it all the way up. And so it's like, that's, you know, you don't always want to push a, an engine to its limit. That's uh, pretty dangerous. Let me see. I'm just checking some chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I checked the first couple comments. There are some, there are some uh, interesting ones. I, I, I read one of the comments. It was a, you know, person complaining. And I went and looked, and they they put a they put a bad rev, you know kind of a foolish bad review up for the game. It was like lame ass devs. And it's like, dude, if you don't like the game, go play something else. You know, it's like there are people enjoying this game. It's like you know I talk about how I hate Star Citizen. You know, it just pisses me off. Uh, the devs of Star Citizen. So I don't you know I used to haunt haunt all their forums and be a pain in the ass. And I said, you know what, screw it. There are people enjoying the game. I don't, you know, I think they cheated me and sold me a sold me a game they never intended to make, and they're a scummy developer, uh, Cloud Imperium Games. But I could sit there and I could just pout and be miserable all day, or I could move on and play a game like this that I enjoy. And if you don't enjoy this game, it's best to move on. Go find a game you like. Move on. Leave, you know, leave a review. That's fine. You know, leave a review. You know, whatever you want, and then uh, move on. You know, but it's like hanging out, just like. Being miserable, it's like, why are you doing that? That's no fun, man, for anybody. You're, you're annoying the people who like the game and just making yourself miserable just going there and you know, living in misery your whole life. So why, dude? Move on. All right, so let's see. What else do I want to do here? So that so Chickadee is working really well now, so I fixed that issue. So that's going to be my new way to do it is, here, I'll show you what I mean when I, uh, when I did that thing that I just did.
So see, I see no reason to do that even faster flying mode, because like, I couldn't I couldn't come out of the out of my no clip because the world hadn't loaded in yet. So there's no point in me going any faster because the world still needs to load in. So here I'll show show you like how I did that. So the whole reason I had to do that screwing around in the microcontroller was on up down. If I have let's say I have a regular airplane, I don't have a VTOL. Up down's my throttle. I do reset 100%, and then I go in here, and I use that to do a couple thresholds, one negative one, and then I use an up down counter. So I've converted that into a configurable throttle. All right. The issue is when I go into a VTOL, I want to use my up down arrow as my throttle when I'm in vertical mode, but I also want to use my up down as my collective when I'm in um, or in, in horizontal mode I want the throttle and in vertical mode I want to have the collective and so if I go into the autopilot so then what I do is I have to convert it back to the way it, it was if you decrease the sensitivity so that's all this does is it brings it back to if I press the up arrow it will slowly go up to one and then if I don't press the up arrow it will slowly go back down to zero and so that is, uh, this is making it nice and smooth for me, and I can very smoothly control it, and I can have it do both functions. So that's why I did that, did it that way. So turned out well that way, I think. So let's see. I'm gonna check up some chat. Uh, so we had ATRs when I was at Eagle, and. Uh, a couple years before I went to Eagle, they had a crash, and that is why the ATRs had to be moved to the south. So when I went there, you could the ATRs all like they had ATRs out of Chicago. They moved all their ATRs to Miami and Puerto Rico, and the reason was there was. Um, let me see if I can bring up a picture of de-icing boots. So, uh, was it Aaron? Let me check the. Yeah, it was Aaron. Uh, the Aaron's talking about watching some aviation disaster videos about the ATR. And so, the ATR is a plane. I'll show you a picture of it when I get a second here. Hopefully, it unscrewed. Okay, good. I fixed display capture. I had display capture all screwed up because I was doing the recording. I was trying to pre cut it. But anyway, so you have these, uh, these pneumatic de icing boots. They're like this. And so they're rubber, they're on the leading edge of the wing, and what they do is they sit flat, and then you inflate them, and they you pump air in there, and they break the ice off. And so if you look here, the ice will build on there, and then when you inflate them, it cracks and breaks off. The issue is, if you inflate the boots too early, what you do is you get this rounding, you get an ice bridge. And so if you wait, if you uh, de-ice too early what's going to happen is the it's going to push the ice out and it's going to create a void and now the boot can't break it because the boot inflates and it never hits the ice and so what will happen is the ice will start to push beyond the boot and then you'll get ice build up behind the boot and then you're screwed and you can't do anything about it once the ice is behind the boot so there are a bunch of different procedures they were going through where like here's another one you can see. Um, uh, that doesn't really show it, but the ice was essentially. It was uh, they would inflate the boots and it would push the ice out, and then you'd never break it off. And so the issue was they came up with some procedures where they were waiting. I think frankly too long to de-ice, and so the procedure that the manufacturer was telling the airlines because the, the manufacturer sets the procedure and then the airlines trains the pilot on the manufacturer's procedure they might do some collaboration where they have a little bit of a different procedure for a different airline but that's generally what happens and so they had a they had a crash uh, with the ATR up around Chicago and the ice got behind the boot and then your wings not producing enough lift and they pancaked it right in the ground so my airline moved all the ATRs to the south where there was no icing and so I think ATR lost certification for icing so it was pretty ugly um, the only plane that I had de-icing boots on was the Eclipse 500 
uh, which was a funky little jet. It has the icing boots. Ours were not. Um, they had not. So they had they had somebody in bed with the FAA, which was not good, and they got found out. And so they were they were certifying the airplane when it shouldn't have been certified. But this dude, you can actually it's highlighted. So this is probably uh, talking about it. But um, let's see. So. Long story short is a software guy was developing this airplane, not aeronautical scientists. You know, they they were they were also designing the airplane. The issue was that the the guy who was in charge of this company was a software guy and he was trying to take too much of a he was trying to take too much of a of a influence in the design. He couldn't just sit back and relax. And so he was putting weird stuff on the airplane. So, for example, here are your static ports, and they're probably talking about it in the article. As you can see, they're highlighted. And so pretty much every airplane I've ever flown, the static ports are on the side. And you notice where the static ports are on here is they're on here. So this is sloped, but it's on top. So what happens is um, to tell your airspeed, the air comes into this pitot tube here. And so you you take the air uh, pressure coming in here and you compare it to static air, and that will tell you how fast you're going. If you know if this air is read if this air is reading, you know one psi and this air is reading 100 psi, then it does the calculation and tells you okay I'm going this fast. Generally these static ports are on the side, and the reason is rain doesn't go in them, so the rain falls straight down when you're parked and you're sitting at the uh, on the ground. And then as you're going, the rain goes right by it. The problem is when they're on top like this, the rain, when you're sitting parked, comes right down in and goes in the static system, destroying your static system. So that was a problem with this plane. And then the boots were not certified right after the FAA and bed stuff. So we had to break our, the boots. And I actually, um, I almost, I, I threatened one of the passengers that I was going to, uh, I was going to have the police meet us and take him away for hijacking if he didn't stop that talk because uh, two of us professional pilots were flying. This guy uh, was, uh, he had just bought one. He was, a, he was a rich guy who didn't have much flight experience but bought one of these airplanes. And so we were flying up at like 30, 33,000 feet. We we're coming up to a thunderstorm, so we were climbing over it, and we clipped the top of it for all of like five seconds. It was literally like we went through the cloud for five seconds, and we got a little bit of superficial ice just on the leading edge. That's it. A little bit of superficial ice on the leading edge. He looks out and goes, why don't you guys use the de-icing boots? One, don't talk to us. Two, uh, and so I turn around and go, because the plane's not certified for de-icing, you know, because I knew he was he was picking up his plane, so it's like, dude, you don't even know the airplane you're gonna be flying. I'm like, dude, because it's not certified for de-ice, and he's like, well, I would use them anyways. And so I I had no response. I'm not gonna respond to that. And then he goes, um, if you guys weren't gonna do something about it, I was gonna have to take over. And so I look at I look at the other other uh, pilot, and he he sees he gives me a little smile. He knows what I'm gonna say, and I go, are you threatening to hijack us? And he goes, well, well, no, well, no, no, I'm not threatening to hijack him. Like, that sounds like you just threatened to hijack us. You said that if we didn't do what you said, you were going to take over. And he goes, oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. And I'm like, so you're not going to hijack us. Is that what you're saying? Because that's what it sounded like. He's like, no, 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 I, I promise, I promise, I'll be quiet. And so he, he sat in his hands and shut up and didn't say another word after that, after I threatened to uh, <laughs> jam him up for hijacking, so... Because he was, he was threatening to take over the airplane. It's like I was gonna squawk 7500, and I was gonna, he was gonna end up in prison for uh, threatening to hijack at me. So, uh, so that's that's all the ice and thing, but uh, and a little story there. So we'll catch up on chat here. Never the yeah, I've never had any scary icing issues. Uh, the again, the only time that you know uh, most of my icing experience is with a hot wing. So a hot wing is what's on a jet. Now, let me find. I'll find a picture of a hot wing. Let's see. What is it doing? Oh, it's TikTok was playing one of my videos. Uh, let's see. So like if we look at a wing picture. So where is it? Where is it? Where Trying to find uh, like a close up of the wing. All 
All right, there was a good one. I just clicked past. Find a picture of the leading edge. There it is right here. All right, so like if you look at the leading edge of this wing, this is all silver. And so what they do is they take bleed air out of the turbines and they come through here and it hot, heats up the wing. So most of my experience has been with a hot wing. So the, the cold water hits this wing and it just evaporates. And then you have boots. And so it wasn't scary, but we got, like I said, we got superficial ice and it was nothing. That was, that's why, like, I got so annoyed with that guy, uh, you know, making a big deal of it. It's like, it was literally nothing. We didn't, like, there was no reason for us to activate the boots. Like, he obviously did not have the experience to be buying that airplane or operating it. And there was no reason for us to activate the boots. Uh, they, it was illegal to activate, the, like an emergency, we could activate the boots if we wanted to, but there was zero reason to activate the boots. It literally, it it evaporated because when you're at that altitude, there's so little moisture that, um, like, generally, if you have boots on the airplane, the reason is because often turboprops will have them. Turboprops are right around, like, 20-something thousand feet. They're right in the thunderstorms all the time, so they're picking up a ton of ice. In jets, usually you're, you're over most of it, and so you might pick up ice for a little bit, but it melts really quickly, and so you don't have to worry about it. And so, like we hit, we hit the ice at like 35,000 feet. It it was on there for we're in the cloud for five seconds. It was it had evaporated in 10 seconds. You know, it it it, it sublimates. It goes right from a solid to a gas. It sublimated in like 10 seconds. And this guy was making a big deal of it. It was like, we had zero buildup. We were at 35,000 feet. There's no way we're getting wet, solid ice buildup on the plane. So it was just like, I've never had a scary situation, but it was just like, that guy still drives me nuts to this day that, you know, he knew nothing and he, and he was cocky because he was rich and thought he could uh, tell the professionals how to do their job. Let me see. Yeah, challenge started... Um, Oh, when does the challenge start again? Let's see. I started the challenge on the 11th because the plan was to start it uh, today, actually. But um, I started on the 11th again because people started building early. So. Yep, but, uh, you know, I enjoy building the first prototype. What I'll probably do now is I'll announce it. I'll show off my prototype and do the video. I'm not going to do an announce video on this one. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Part of the issue with the announce video is I don't want to do the announce video until the rules are locked. And again, because I, I had somebody, I had two people come in who didn't read the rules and started building, and then complained that their builds weren't going to fall, that weren't going to conform to the rules. And it was like, you got to start with reading the rules. And so, um, you know, I, I don't want to record the video until after I get the rules locked because I do make changes if people if there's something that's you know people are having problems with or that they need clarification with you know I do make some rules change like I I changed a couple of rules on this one um, I, I added four blocks of length for overhang on the tail initially you didn't have that um, so that's on there you can have uh, tail overhang now you couldn't before you know, so stuff like that. So if I recorded the video on the 11th, the problem was if I make a rule change and somebody only watches the video, even if I say, you know, you have to go to Discord for the definitive, most up-to-date rules, you're still going to get somebody complaining that, hey, I watched the video and now you're saying my build is disqualified. So I try to nip all these things in the bud. I don't like doing it. I don't like disqualifying these things. And certainly the person who built it doesn't like me to disqualify it. So it's like I try... Did not do that, so I'd have to release the announcement video days after it starts anyway. And also, I'm getting so many builds now for these challenges that I really don't want to go to a system like a lot of the other people have gone to where they... What did I just do? I just clicked on something. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go to the systems other people have done where the community votes on the builds. I want to review all the builds, but it's getting to the point now where it takes me like 12 to 16 hours to get the videos done, so... You know, and so one of the reasons I'm not going to do an announcement video on this is I don't want, um, I don't want to get an undue number of builds that uh, on the challenge. You know, whoever is going to just join it and sees it, whoever's on Discord and sees it, um, you know, that's kind of the core community. Uh, you know, I want to make sure the core community gets, you know, a chance to always uh, participate 
and then um, you know if others others want to just jump in as well that's fine but you still have to make your way to discord so just to make sure the numbers don't get unmanageable because it was like 27 builds I'll still probably review them but it's gonna take me weeks to get them done so Yep, I enjoy building the prototypes. I'll probably, you know, maybe I'll record them and uh, have like a little uh, series for that vehicle. And then I'll I'll do like a live stream showing it off. And then, you know, that will come, that'll probably come with the announcement. I've done that before where I built the prototype and then I kind of announced the challenge with my prototype. So. Screaming, huh? Oh, I see. Probably for the 300s. Uh, yeah, you know, like I said, the fuel rate is—it's ugly, but it's not—it's—it's it's pretty bad at 300 knots. Um, once I start, once you know, so I have a constant speed propeller. Once I start increasing the propeller pitch, the RPM drops, and then I get down to 400, uh, like 450 aside. So we're talking 450. So we're talking a 7.5 RPS is cruise, and that's uh, at 100% prop. At 7.5, I do 220, and then if I want to reduce the thrust, some the throttle, some bring the throttle back, I can get even better economy. I made it up to the Arctic. I have a uh, hundred. Let me find, check the fuel here. I did a flight to the Arctic uh, yesterday as a test. Let's see. I have 107 gallons, 130, so I have 237 gallons. I had 70 gallons remaining after going up to the Arctic. And I, I maintained I maintained 300 knots to about here, and then I, I changed over to max efficiency for the rest of the way, and so I was what is it? Um, what did I say 237, 237 minus 70. So I burned 167 gallons uh, going up to the Arctic. Uh, at max, mostly max efficiency, but I was at 300 knots. I came out, I took off, went all the way down here, came up to here before I slowed down uh, by changing the props and then went up the rest of the way. So this was all max efficiency. This here, this loop was uh, max speed. So, uh, you know, 130 gallons, not too bad. Was, is that what it was, 130? 167 gallons, so not too bad. Yeah, and then if, if you multiply that out by, let's see, uh, 167 times uh, 3.75, that's 632 liters. So, you know, the diesel, you know, whatever the diesel is right now, let me see what the diesel is. I really wish they'd fix the uh, pricing. but um, So you can buy diesel here for two bucks. So you're talking uh, $1,200 to go up to the Arctic. So that's not bad. Yeah, because you figure if I did one rescue mission, just take it, pick them one person up, dropping them off, it's going to take me about the same amount of time to go up the Arctic, and I get 2000 So for one person pays for the rescue, and then every other person on top of that is cheddar cheese, dollar bills, profit, money, y'all. So. Emergencies will ask for some power, but if you keep 100, you'll be fine. How much fuel can you carry? Yep, so the fuel total is, uh, was it 237 gallons? And that's that's actually not the full fuel. Uh, that's, for example, here I can show you fuel, full fuel. So, you you know, this is without, um, this is with a little bit of uh, void in the pipes. So let's get a full fuel rating here. So there's a little bit of uh, when you when you spawn it in the tanks will spawn with diesel and the pipes will spawn empty, and then it will leak out. So there is. Uh, so with that two two thirty one two thirty one two hundred thirty one liters or uh, gallons rather so it's gallons, times you know uh, three point seven eight five to turn it into liters. So 237 times uh, 3.75 is uh, 897 liters in there. So pretty good, pretty good uh, capacity. I, I can go anywhere with this. So 
I don't. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't tried with a sling load in a container. It should have the power for it. It has. It has. Um, the RPS is limited to I think six RPS, and these engines are a lot more powerful than that. So it shouldn't have any problem. But I, I'm not going to sling load any containers. I don't. I don't do any real air loading of containers like that. Um, the only place I'll do that is if I fly up to BVG, I will do it to. Uh, to move them from BVG to to the actual uh, container port because of course you know I do need to make the video kind of telling the devs how to do logistics properly now that they've shown that they are a little bit more receptive to that at first I didn't think they you know they said they listened to uh, 545's video and so I might actually like try doing a video where I kind of you know talk to them a little bit about logistics but um yeah because it seems like they might be a little bit receptive to it but like for example bv you know my issue with the uh tajin is great tajin should be another fj essentially and what i mean by that is uh tajin is let's quickly save i just want to check a paint and then we'll save it real quick all right So, like, if we look at Tajin, so, like, up in the Arctic here is, theoretically, the way they should be operating this game, in my opinion, is each of the continents, we'll call that a continent, we'll call this a continent, we'll call this a continent. They should be kind of areas unto themselves, and especially, like, you need, to get this continent, you need to buy the DLC, so, like, this one's pretty much a an area unto itself, right? You can... You can do mining, you can do selling, you can do trading all throughout this continent. And then this continent, you can do the same thing. And one of the issues here is I'd like to see more ability to stay up in the Arctic. And so one of the issues I have with Tajin is Tajin's great, big airstrip, all that. I think they should put the container port here. And the reason is, like, BVG is fine, but the issue is... You can't bring any airplanes into some of these areas, and I really wish they would do a pass where it make airplanes viable. So if you put container port here, they don't have to get rid of BVG, but they could add Tajin as a container port. BVG is way the hell over here. So the only thing that can go there is trains, and you can bring ships up here. So you can do trains and ships, but you have to do a VTOL, which I hate doing VTOLs for containers. I really want to do fixed wing. They make it so fixed wing is pretty irrelevant in game, which is unfortunate. They made some really cool airports. And so if they put containers here, you can move them by via ship. And, like, you can't do inter-Arctic container transport. So they should put a container port at Tajin, and then you can do inter-Arctic container transport, kind of like how you do from Spy Case to Komodo. And then what you'd be able to do is then it makes it viable to do container transport, say from FJ, right? We go pick up a container from FJ, drive it via the ground over, put it in the airplane, fly the airplane up here, uh, launch a container mover, grab the container, and just drive it down to the dock. And that makes it viable to do uh, some air-based container transport. So I would like to see them do that. So all they really need to do is add a container port here. And that would be perfect. And that's a little bit of work. You know, I imagine all they do is have a, a pre-built block that says within this area spawn containers. Uh, they just need to go in the code and add another base, you know, Tajin, and put it here. And then uh, that would be it probably, you know. So it would be pretty easy for them to do. And then that would allow me to quickly like, okay, we come down here with my container shifter. We drive up here. Okay, we put the container right here, put it on an airplane, and screw I'd also like to see them put some small uh, airplane sized pallets in here so that we could uh, do some actual uh, container moving moving with uh, with airplanes. Because the airplanes, right, the fixed wing airplanes now are not viable, and I hate that because, you know, um, any sort of vertical stuff, like you need a big vehicle to be moving any sort of weight, you know. Am I featured in videos? What do you mean there, Citrus? I may have said your name in one of the videos. You landed fine in how many takes? Uh, I landed fine the first try on the um, when I uh, when I did it in the video. It, well, it took you know 
first try is relative. Did I come straight in and do it? I came over the pad and I slowly worked it in there and it landed, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was talking about time is precious, spending it full negativity is bad. Yep, I just, you know, that's something that I learned that I think some people learn a little bit late is, you know, if you hang around negativity all the time, it's just draining. And it's like, you know, Reddit is just a negative cesspool. Uh, Steam, unfortunately, is a negative cesspool. It's Steam, like, I still go on Reddit and Steam, and I try to help people out. And that's the reason I go there, is I want people to enjoy the game. And, and you know, people helped me out when I was first starting the game. And so I like to help other people out because, you know, that's how you do it. You keep passing it on. And I like to go in there and help people out, but it's very draining. The negativity is pretty gross in there. Yep, that's the one you're talking about, Flight 409. Yep, behind the boots, and they lost lift and, and balled it in. The only benefit with that is you go in so hard, it's not like, you know, you're... It, you don't last very long. You, you're instantly just gone. Or... Hot, hot wing sounds like a chicken meal at a restaurant, yeah. Hot wing is superior wing. Should I use an 18-cylinder 1x1 module engine or a 3x3 cylinder for a truck? 1x1. A 3x3 is insanity for a truck. I understand why people do it, but, like, you know, again, it's a fantasy game. Do whatever you want, but it's like, here, if we look at, uh, did I buy the sucker? No. This is my test world anyway, so let's buy this and I'll show you. A 3x3 is nuts. Like, I have, a, I have a short, I'll play it here in a second, of me next to a real tractor engine. So, like, our stuff's already oversized in game. So this tractor's a little bit oversized. Here's a 3x3 three three next to a this. That is insane. That is insane. You know, and so this is, this is mine in here. What do I have in here? I have a 1, 2, 3, 5, 5 by 4. This is a 20. So that's a 20 cylinder in here. And that's a, you know, and then the problem is, so that, that's big enough as it is, right? Now go even worse here. Now you need a crankshaft. So in order to put a 3 by 3 in the sucker, you need that. You need this. You're going to need a belt drive on there. That's the minimum of what you're going to need for this truck. Where the hell are you putting that in there? Like, you can just barely fit it below the frame rails. And so, like, here, I'll bring up my video of me next to a real tractor engine. I can actually play my own videos. Not, not have, get booted off alive. I think Endo did that one time. He was playing some Godzilla stuff and eventually booted us. We were on the workbench. It, it booted us all off of the, <laughs> all off of there. Here. So here's me next to a real tractor engine. So I'll pause it when I put my arm out. So that's my arm at shoulder height. That's the engine. So you see how the one by one is much more realistic in size. So that is much, uh, that's much more realistic to what the real engine bay looks like. You know, of course that's a real one, but uh, yeah, that's more of what, of size wise, what you're gonna want. So, you know, the question was use a one by one or a three by. So a three by is just, I think, way oversized. You know, it, it's nice because you only want the one cylinder, but you know, you still need to put a one by it's going to be a one by three clutch on there. So it's just the one by ones are much more configurable for that. Like I said, this is what I have. And is Triton actually five by fives? I think Triton is three by threes. I got to look. I think I would, I would say Triton's. Yeah. Triton's definitely a three by three. Triton has a three by three in it. Two, eight, eight, cylinder, you know, two, eight cylinder, three by threes. Why is my, my videos, playing in a loop there. I can hear myself talking as much as it's entertaining. <laughs> Maybe they are. You know, I uh, it would be nice if they were and they would reach out. Like, you know, 
that's one thing is, you know, like I, I offered to the star system devs, of, of course, you know, they're not going to contact me, but it was like, I was one of the few people in the community who had actual flight experience. There were a couple of us who were pilots and it's like, if you reach out to the people who are subject matter experts, now they said they reached out to fighter pilots and stuff, and I'm sure they did. You know, Chris Roberts loves to waste money and to aggrandize uh, himself going and meeting people. But um, but it was like some of the logistics stuff was just nuts in that game, and it's like, you know, contact the people who know some logistics stuff. It just, it would, it would uh, help out, and, you know, I think that would, uh, would make the game a little bit better is getting the logistics a little bit better in-game. Yep, no suffering if you're going in. If you if you ball it in at any sort of speed, you know, it's done. You if you if you ever listen, you know, it's it's macabre. But if you listen to like some of the cockpit recordings, you know, usually the, the pilots are pretty calm. And they're like, "Up, oh, I guess this is it." You know, <laughs> it's like it's usually about what it is. They'll say bye to their family and up, but I guess this is it, and they usually ball it in. Yeah, you, know, you have enough experience, you know when it's going to be. It's like, no, nope, that's it. As, you know, you'll get, like, the pastures will be... The pastures don't know if that's going to be it, and so that freaks them out a little bit. They're kind of like, you know... Or they always think everything's going to be it, and it's like... You know, that's why, like, the pastures will all freak out during turbulence, and it's like, we don't care because we know, like, this is nothing, you know? Haven't made a VTOL since I was about 200 hours in the game. Yep, clutch, yeah, yeah, like I was saying, the clutch 2 adds a ton of space, so it's just, and then flywheel. So the other thing is, if I have a truck, I want a flywheel on here. Did I put one in here? Maybe I didn't. No, I did. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, right here. So I want to, I want a flywheel on a truck. And so now you got to put a 3x3 three three flywheel on there, so it's like, it's even worse. Where the hell are we here? So we have a 3x3 three three flywheel on here. Look at that sucker. You got to get that in the truck. So one by one makes more sense for a truck. The only thing I think three by threes are three by three and five by fives are really usable for is C vehicles or like really built big fantasy builds, trains. Uh, trains would have that, you know, because like let's find a locomotive, locomotive uh, diesel engine. Let's find some locomotive diesel engines here. Not engineer. <laughs> Google's been really ugly with trying to, like, guess what I want lately. It's like, stop guessing what I want, Google, and just put in what I do want. Like, here is a, uh, that's, that's a loco engine. So you see, like, that would be a 3x3. Three three. You know, you need to say, say to yourself, this is a, a 3x3 three three is one block, is uh, three quarters of a meter. So that looks about three quarters of a meter. And then you're talking, it's going to be a meter and a half tall. So there's, you know, the man is two meters tall. So, you know, uh, this is, that's the turbo there. So you figure the top of the cylinder heads, this is all crank down here. So this is crank, uh, pistons, uh, probably valves. Why are they running the, I'm interested how they're running this. Got to be cylinder heads here, valves. These are blow off valves, uh, blow off covers, I would say. Uh, the blowers right here. That's the flywheel. Um, looks like it's doing. Looks like there's some sort of uh, engine-driven pump here. Wonder if it's. It might be a turbo super. This could be the turbo. This could be the supercharger down here. That looks like. Is that electric motor? That could be a starter motor. Uh, that's a filter, probably there's dual filters here. So there's probably water separator and fuel filter here. So that's probably the water separator there, fuel filter. Let's see what else, sorry for the zoom in fast. That's gotta be, one, this must be valves and these much, must be valve rockers in here. And then some oil in there, oil plumbing there, yeah. Let's say that's what we're looking at there for the loco. But that, you know, so three by threes, loco, ships, five by fives. I'd say pretty much your only application is going to be ships. You know. you know, some people like to over, oversize some of their stuff in game just because they don't want to have to, like, they don't have to make everything work perfectly, and I get that as well. 
you know, you can just kind of overpower it and then you don't have to worry about it. Checking some chat. If so, what's it doing, uh, FS? Is it flipping around? Like, is it like jumping forward, back, forward, back? Is it like flipping like crazy? Because if that's it, it's bec it's likely because you're um, you're overspeeding the rotors. And if you if you put the rotors over 60 RPS, it's gonna flip around. So I make sure your props aren't going faster than uh, 60 RPS. Yeah, I don't know why you make it a boat that goes 300 knots. Two stroke, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that would make sense of being a two stroke. Let me see if I can bring that up again. Yeah, there's uh Yeah, that makes sense if that's a two stroke diesel. Let me see if I can get a four-stroke locomotive engine. Compare them. Yep, that would make sense, that being a, a two-stroke. That looks like a more modern engine there. I need engines. I'd like to do some more design work on some of my stuff. Oh, there's a nice G. Look at this G, really quick. It looks like blower there. You know, for a diesel, you need to force force the air in, so you you have a blower. Looks like valve rockers there again, probably. Or valve uh, rods, rather. Rockers in the top. I always like looking at these engines. They're kind of cool. Just trying to finish up chat, and then we'll maybe work on something here. Yeah, very rarely do I find do I use a 5x5 five five for anything. <laughs> the old, uh, that was nice when your build goes off and takes off by itself. So I updated this uh, cab over a little bit. Uh, it's in tomorrow's career build series episode. I got to finish editing that. It was late last night. I was editing it and like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. So let's, let's uh, see. What are all so this is the template for the build challenge. It's, it's, I pretty much, I literally copied Triton's pad and then I edited it. And so the stairwell, the green area, if it, uh, what is this? Anyways, go by the numbers on there. Uh, for example, like the, uh, the chickadee, it sticks over one block, but it is also one block short here. So the chickadee is like that. That's fine. It just has to be that length. So, you know, like I'm measuring it pretty simply like this. I'm going to come in with each build, measure it. It has to be 37. If it exceeds 37, not good. There, that's uh, 33. And I think I might have, let me check the rules again. I may have uh, put a little leeway on that. I'm not gonna be overly crazy with it, but the problem is if I get it too close, you know you're gonna have somebody, did I close down Discord? I did. You're gonna have somebody closing down, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna push the rules, and then I can't use it in the build challenge, in the build uh, career build series. And then it's like, come on, dude, I, I'm trying to use it in the series, you know. So, and let's see, what's the width on there? Yeah, so the length changed. The width's the same, 33 blocks width. So, um, you know, that's to keep it within here because again, I need to be able to dock. So I can't have it sticking over. I have railings here. I don't want to hit people's propellers on railings. Um, you know, again, it's it, you see, it's already challenging enough to get a vehicle that's as small as Chickadee in there and landed. 
you know, so I start getting people who are right on the or on the razor's edge or exceeding, it's going to be a problem. And you know, somebody was building the uh, the connection wrong. The connection is aligned up correctly so that this is the front, this is the rear, uh, and you see how I if if Triton's moving, I need to come in from the rear. I need to move with Triton's relative velocity. I can't side strafe the whole time, and so. Uh, if you didn't know this, the H on the helipad is aligned the way it has to be for you to land. So if we look at Triton, the H is aligned the way you want to land. So the H here is lined up this way because you come in and you land this way. If the H was sideways, you'd come in and land this way. And so the H is telling you how to land. That's part of the whole reason the H is oriented like that. So sometimes it's sideways. But, you know, you'd have to be able to strafe sideways and land, which is a pain. And then, guess what? We're going to hit a rotor in the crane. So this way, it lets me stick over. You notice I'm all folded up and in. And so I don't mind if your rotors stick over as long as I can fold them up. Because, again, I need to be able to dock and have this not hit. So, like, if you notice, this vehicle, I can leave the rotors undone. They only go to this piping. And then I actually have one block. So, you know, as long as I don't hit the rotors on anything, we're good. Uh, I can fold them up. So. so let's see. Finish some chat here. Yeah, so, uh, okay. I don't know. You have to keep working on FS Gamer. I, I can't really help too much with the challenge. I don't I don't help anybody. I don't um, give thumbs up or likes or anything on anybody's builds during the challenge. It's, I don't want to show any favoritism during the challenge, so. You know, if it was a regular build, that's fine. But during the challenge, I usually don't help out too much on that stuff. Kind of let people do their own thing. Most train engines are two-stroke. I got you. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, I like a two-stroke diesel. I, uh, I I don't have any IRL experience with them. I uh, there's a guy, uh, Danger Marine. It's in Australia. He uh, he does some really good videos. He like. He does uh, marine repair stuff, and he has a two. He uh, refurbished an old two-stroke uh, fishing boat as his like personal boat, and so it's very interesting. He went to uh, he went to a Detroit guy uh, that he's friends with, and uh, they worked on the two-stroke, which is cool. So two-stroke. Let's see if I can find a two-stroke diesel. They're nice and simple, and you know diesels are rock solid. They'll last forever. Trying to see if I can get some good images of a two-stroke diesel going here. I like going over some of the stuff's fun. So let's see. I'm trying to find a good two-stroke diesel on here. I'm trying to see one with the sleeve in there. I don't like some of these pictures. I want I'm trying to find. I'm trying to see if they had a cutaway cylinder. That's a two-stroke petrol. Here's a two-stroke marine diesel with a cutaway. Bingo. Ugh, oh, it's very low res. Let's click on it. Go on the website and see if I can get a better one. Here we go. There we go. All right, so I can zoom in on this one there. It's backwards. Okay. Whatever. This is big enough. Yeah, so the um, crank down here. Really long rods on this. These are blow-off ports. My understanding is if the pressure gets too high in there, these will pop off. You can see this marine. These are these are the staircases for people to come up. <laughs> people can literally walk in these doors. Uh, it's nuts. But, uh, you know, so you essentially you're... Um, where's your air intake? I'm trying to remember this. So your exhaust... X, your exhaust output, sh uh, your exhaust port should be midline, I think. Yeah, so I think what's happening, you have a blower, your blower is blowing air in. And then as, so let's say you're on your first stroke, so the air is blown in, and then the piston will come up, it will compress, and it gets to the top, it's going to inject, it's going to go down, and then you're going to have, um, Gonna go down. I'm trying to think. Up. Intake compression. So yeah. So it's gonna go up, compress, go down, and then the blower is gonna start to blow in again. And then there should be an exhaust uh, opening here, and the cylinder will pass the exhaust port. 
and now all that exhaust that's in the cylinder, the blower is going to blow out of the exhaust. And then as the cylinder comes back up, it's going to seal off the exhaust port and the air is still blowing in and it's going to compress that. Valve's probably going to close, boom, pop it again. So that's just kind of my memory from last time I saw one. But uh, kind of kind of neat the way some of those work. So Pretty neat, pretty neat. I like engines. Yep, Danger Stu. Yep, I love I love watching Danger. I haven't seen his videos in a while. One thing that, that YouTube's a pain in the ass for is it will, uh, you know, you'll have somebody you're subscribed to and then it'll stop showing you their stuff. And it's like, dude, I subscribe to this person because I want to see their stuff. Is a VTOL with a single centrally located tilting rotor? I uh, probably be pure fantasy, mainly because that's the main area where you're going to be, you know, that's your main carriage where you can put things, you know, so there's no problem with having it there, but there's a reason why most, it's mostly fighter jets is because the fighter jet, you don't need anything in the center there. You know, most other type of uh, vehicles, you're going to want to be able to put people there. So people are cargo there. So you're pretty much using up your cargo area for that. So. So what I want to work on here. I'm trying to think. I'm kind of having a blank here. I kind of just got another build done. Having a little bit of a blank of what I want to work on here. It will end up soon here. We'll see. We're working on the uh, transmission. I haven't, I haven't edited the transmission video yet, but uh, we'll have to do that. I think. Let me, uh, so somebody was asking about if I had any 5 by 5s Let's take out the, I'll bring out the other home ship too. It just, the size of the other home ship is, it's a cool size, but it really limits what I can do with it. And that's kind of sad is it's a cool ship and I'm, I like it, but it's tough for me to use it. So like this was the initial, this was the home ship before Triton. So this was the one before Triton. And so this was, then I started over to make Triton. So this was, you know, maybe I'll revisit this at some point, but uh, this was gonna have a crane and then put cargo in the bow. It wasn't gonna hold a ton of cargo. And then it has a really big helipad on the back, take very large vehicles. And then it has a large rescue boat that uh, slides into the stern like so. And then these are kind of annoying, these little wings, because that's where the rescue boats are. This is a much more old school type of ship. And then, let's see what else we have in here. Go up to the bridge. So this is kind of like the middle, you know, crew room. And then this was the bridge for this ship. But this was pre-Triton. This was uh, what was going to be Triton before I made a. I kind of decided to do some design changes. Where the hell am I going here? I think I have to go out here. And then so these are like the little indentations, which are annoying. But these hold little boats on the side, so it has the two parasite boats on the side there. And then because of that, it made some really weird shapes in here I had to deal with. And I think this has five buys in it. So here is the cargo in the bow, center of fuel tanks. Now I pretty much do underfloor fuel tanks. And then this has three four-cylinder 5x5s five in it. So this thing is uh, buku. But it was just annoying. Like this bump out here was bugging me. And so, uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't all that great, this one. Not bad. And this was the first uh, save I made of Triton. So this is Triton. Triton had a much more, uh, more pronounced uh, deck or, uh, room here. This room is much larger, and that got shrunk down. You see how big it is now? And so that, that was shrunk. And so this all slid forward, giving me more rear area. This was the initial helicopter to be used on Triton. Let's see what else I have for some picks here. Yeah, so here's like, here's the progression of Triton. And then I started over, you know, copying over. So 
you see all the versions of Triton. And then this is the late, this is the quote unquote new home ship that was supposed to be for this career build series. I'll, I'll get to it eventually, but it just really limited. Like you could probably carry one container. I don't know why it's listing at the moment, but um, you could probably carry one container. It's a good size. I really love the shape of it. It's based off another Damon ship, but um, it's a much more limited. Like it does have a lifeboat. It could go do some rescues with a lifeboat. This one I would love to get back to. I don't know why the hell it's listing. I wonder if it's the rocket glitch got changed a little bit, but you can see this is, um, oh, you know what I bet it is? Infinite electricity. That's it. It has a counterweight, it's infinite electricity. I think that's what it is. So this one's running, what's that? It's twin sixes on here. So this, I'd like to get back to this at some point, but um, you know, get to this at some point. Triton's still not done, so it's, but I'd like to get back to this at some point and use it. But you see, it's just much more limited. Like, I really can't land much of a... I could probably land that new VTOL in the back here. That would probably fit, but that's very limited. You know, I can't take any containers, really. It might be able to pull one in the back. That's about it, but... You know, so it'd be a fun ship, but it just, it, it just doesn't have the usability that Triton has. So that's kind of why I haven't got back to that. This was a fun little boat. This was, uh, this was gonna, this was gonna be the, this was gonna be the little rescue boat for uh, that new home ship. It's kind of a weird little buggy design. I, I've modeled it off to something I saw. It's kind of a neat little, neat little boat. I don't know if it even runs. There it goes. A funny little boat. This was, I was trying to, there was one that uh, was on that Damon ship that I was trying to model it after. So kind of like that, but, um, but yeah, so eventually I'll get back to that home ship, but, uh, you know, I'm working on Triton now. Let's see what else I have for builds here I need to work on. Probably find like a little bit of here and there that I need to work on. I need to finish up the fire truck that's due the 18th so i have a couple days for that so let's do that off screen chassis need work to be uh, eventually released yeah oh i forgot about this little amphib truck this this one works that would be cool to get on to triton that's one reason i went back to triton too triton has the garage i can carry these little vehicles on triton and, and bring them with me so like that's one thing i really like with triton Triton's just a good size i can do a ton of stuff with it so it's kind of that's one reason why I got away from that other home ship. Need to need to work on this. Um, what do you call it? The did I copy over car parts with this? I probably did. That's gross. Um, I have a new standard anyway, but uh, the road train tractor needs some loving. Get that going at some point. I don't think I. What am I was trying to see if I have any worked on like a big guppy. V, that big V tall, the Ant two uh, is usable. That's good right now. This needs some work. Thirty eight foot race boat. A new car would be kind of fun to do at some point. I'm trying to look for a new build because I just finished Chickadee, so I'm kind of thinking what I want to do next. This needs some more work. The high speed container ship at some point. This is so another compact container mover. Maybe we'll work on that. That would be something to work on. All right, let's work on that because I, uh, so the whole thing is, again, uh, logistics wise, some of the things the devs are doing, one thing I wish they would do is so, you know, if you come to here, we own this island now in the career build series. And so, you, you know, if you've never built one of these before, you can build these static vehicle bases. And so if you go in here, you can build. And so you can put a house on here, whatever you want. So like, let me see. So this was the Cape House from the, let's see, from the uh, first career build series. I put it up here. And so you can build these houses and stuff. And so it's really cool. You can build your own base. And so, like, for example, you can put a crane on there, you can do all this stuff. And so the issue being this is ideally what I think the devs should do and will be cool is if you could put one of these bases at each of your ports. 
And so what it will allow you to do is if you were at, so like they took out, they used to have cranes back in the day and they took them out because the reason um, was, you know, it was, it was using up too much resource. People complain about the lag. And so again, the only reason, real, real way, unless you rewrite the whole game is to cut things out. And so like what they should do is put a static workbench right over here and let you spawn a crane here and that way you can spawn it in and out of the world. You can work on it and it would give us something else to build. And so you could build a crane here to load and unload ships. And so Sawyer South has no way to, uh, you know, let's say you didn't have a crane, right? I can go up here to Spy Cakes and I can spawn a container shifter and I can drive it down here, grab the containers, move them over to the ship. I can even spawn my ship loader, which is on the workshop. I can come out pick up a container and then load it onto a ship with the ship loader, go put that away and then sail away. And then I can go over to Komodo and I can dock, spawn that, go get the containers, drop them off, get new containers and go. The issue is something like Sawyer South, you can't do that. And so they could fix that by putting one of those static benches where you can then uh, put a crane here. And then what they should do is they should do an outside spawn uh, vehicle so that you can spawn a vehicle to then grab containers bring them over to the crane So like little logistics things like that. It would be nice to see so one thing I've been I built is for Sawyer South I have no way to move the containers because I can't spawn something pretty much every other base except uh, I think BBG as well BBG has no place to spawn a land vehicle So I can't spawn anything to unload a train. I can't spawn anything to unload a ship and so, again, here's the logistics problem at BVG. Why do I not go up to the Arctic to go to BVG? Well, how, you know, with Triton, I can use the crane to unload the containers, but then how do I move them over to the ship? So that's what this thing is all about, is moving it over to the ship. And so I need to be able to load it on Triton. It needs to be small. It can't take up a container slot because that's wasted uh, revenue. So... I have a couple things I've been working on. So this was one. Let me read some chat. Well, I see it moving now. Yeah, I really like uh, Stu's trawler. It's cool. Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh, I'll show you Triton a second here. So this is a this is a very compact container mover, and so the way this works is essentially this is the jacking system. It jacks the container up. This slides under, then the container rides on this. It's remote controlled, and I can drive this around. This isn't bad. It's uh, it fits on Triton. I'd like to see if I can't get something more compact. So that'd be something fun to play with. Let's quickly. Um, Steelmate's asking about um, the ballast. Uh, Stig is asking about the home ship. Um, let's grab Triton. I'll show you the ballast on it. So Triton's ballast. So the way I kind of do ship ballasting now is a lot of the ships, this is how they're doing them anyway, is on your lowest level, you're going to want to put your water ballast. Above that, put your fuel ballast. And then make your floor. All right, and this is actually helpful because if you figure the this narrows down here so this is very very little usable space in the bottom anyway and there's very little usable space back here so if we go ahead and we look inside let's actually do cross section here oh, what is it? so here's the cross section everything is blacked out but um i gotta move it a little bit so like here's the cross section of triton so if you look at it, this is all water ballast in the bottom. So there's four water ballast tanks, two stern, two uh, forward. And then above that, you have fuel. Fuel is four tanks above that. And then the deck starts. So the benefit of this is, again, this is all slope blocks. So that is wasted space you really can't do much with anyway. And this is all sloped in blocks up front. Can't really do much there. So as you move up, you're getting more usable space anyway. So you move up to here, and now here are all your uh, engines and stuff. 
in your engineering section. So here is the, this is the garage that I can put vehicles in. And this is the uh, engineering section here. And so that's how I do the ballasting there. If we look inside, uh, it's mostly in the stern. So here's the, here's the counterweight. If we come over the side, this is the counterweight is in the middle. And if we go in here, this is all weight block. As you can see, all weight block. Let's get rid of uh, the selection pane here. So this is all weight blocks in here. And this is the water ballast. So you see all weight blocks underneath, all weight blocks here. I've been wanting to paint this for a second. Let's paint it. Again, this is a, uh, can't take that little bit of paint nonsense. So this is all weight blocks in here. And then I fill it with uh, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, huge mass in here. And then the bow, because you know we, we struggle with buoyancy in the bow generally, I don't have any weight blocks in the bow, nor will I put them in the bow. It stays uh, no weight blocks in the bow. And so this is still water ballast, though. So there's no weight blocks, but there's water ballast, so I can still control it. And then if we go up a level, here is all fuel. Fuel, fuel, counterweight, fuel, fuel. And so that is all of my... Why is this not... Painting that too. And so this is, as you can see, this has it all uh, w fuel there. So that is my ballast. So when I, like, when people say, <laughs> we're joking that they're going to lift Triton up off, you're not lifting Triton up. Triton weighs 120,000 just sitting there without any water in it. And then it has 170,000 liters of water. So I don't, whatever that's weighing in game, one kilogram, we hope. So let's say it's one. It's let's say it's what it's supposed to be, one kilogram. So it's um, you're talking three hundred thousand pounds before you've even added the the fuel, and then you have another hundred and forty thousand there. So you're talking around five hundred thousand is what this thing weighs when it's uh, when it's launched. So it's you know it's not getting picked up. But um, so it, let's see. One of the questions was how do you establish a water line? So that's uh, answering the stig. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it won't it won't shift up if you're RPMing, so you can um, so you can essentially keep it um, primed, essentially, and keep the torque up. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. That's cool. That's a cool automatic system. How do you work out the water line on a ship? Is it arbitrary? It depends. So, like, I I put where I want it. It's important to put where you want it. One of the most obnoxious things for me in game is that. Um, you get that water washing over the deck, so need that not to happen personally. For this, uh, it has these walkouts here in the rescue zones to, to get on to there, so this needs to be above the water for me. The doors need to be above the water, so I don't have to worry about water getting in on the ship. And then uh, that kind of works out the water line for me. You know, that's the main thing. You kind of put it where you want. I don't want water washing over the deck, so what I usually do is the water line... If it's going to be something small, I'll do one to two blocks above where I want the water line. That way, I don't get any of that water washing over the deck that gives it that looks like it's flooded all the time. I don't want it looking like it's flooded. I don't want water inside. So that's how I kind of determine my water line. It I can change the Pimsoil line. I don't have a Pimsoil line on here. Is um, I can sink the ship a little bit extra if I need to get under a bridge. I've set this up so the water line and the mast all work together. So if this is folded, it will not um, hit the bridges. And if you look at Triton, it is, it's got a little bit of leeway. It doesn't have a ton. But you also need to look at world view. If I put this in world view and I sit this in the water, that's how much space I have. So you kind of have to build it to... Um, you know, you might hit the bottom, so you kind of have to set that up as well. But um, you kind of sit it in there and you see where you want it. And so, like, I want enough space here that I can get up. Uh, if, as I burn fuel and Triton, it's going to rise up, of course, because it's losing a lot of weight. And this will automatically take in the water ballast. So that's why you need water and fuel. Uh, some There are some tugboats or a lot of tugboats. They only use fuel as their ballast. 
So, for example, my tugboats don't have water ballast. I need them to be full of fuel. So even if I even if I like go down 20% on fuel in my tugboat, I go fill it up because I need the water ballast to keep me stable or the fuel ballast to keep me stable. So they do that in real life. They try to top off the tugboats whenever they can because they need the stability. So check some more uh, chant. Logging tugs. I've seen them, the little tiny tugs that go 360. Those are fun. I like those. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen those tugs. I like them. They, they remind me of the little uh, bumper boats. Yep, I like having a home truck too, Anton. That's uh, that's fun. Thought the cranes and the docks were a fever dream. No, they used to be there. Again, like I, like I said, I think the way they should bring them back is again, put a static vehicle workbench here, and then we can put a crane wherever we want and then remove it, and that will cut down on the lag because if you have a crane at each base because you used an add-on, it's gonna slow your game down. If you have a crane up when you bring it up, it's not going to slow it down. If you leave a home base up and it starts to slow your game down, you just teleport over there, you despawn it, and then when you go over there next, you respawn it. So I think it's a great way to do it. So instead of just talking about it in the ether, I'll, I'll make a, a request to the devs at some point. Do I have any really big land vehicles? Not really. I, well, Big's relative. I have ro the road train there, the tanker, which can haul um, about 50,000 gallons of uh, liquid. Uh, I answered the, the weight on Triton. Triton weighs 120 uh, without any few, any water in there. It weighs about three to 400,000 with water in there and another 100-something thousand kilograms. So it weighs at least about 500,000 pounds, I'd say. More, or more than that, because he figured this is kilograms, so 120, so 2.2, so it's that 2 is going to be uh, 240, and then 1% would be, what's that, 2,400, is that 2,400? 2,400, 2,400, another 2,400 on top of that, so you're talking another 5 on top of that, so 245,000 pounds uh, is what Triton weighs empty, and then you're adding another 300,000 pounds of water and about another 300,000 pounds of fuel. So it's probably six to 700,000 pounds. So it's it's pushing a million pounds, or you know, it's over half a million pounds uh, when it has all of its ballast in there. So that's when like somebody was joking, like they can pick it up with their VTOL. Please try. <laughs> you're not picking up anything with this. You know, it's just it's insanity big. Yep, good, glad you, you found that. Like here, if I... So one of the reasons I changed that, like if we bring up the old home ship, the first one, like this one here, we go on a cross-section view of this, like this one I used to build all the way down to the bottom. And the issue with that is... Well, it should be this one, right? Why is it not doing it? Where is the hell is where's, where's, where's the thing? Where the hell is this? Why why am I not getting section plane? I don't use the section plane very often, so I'm probably screwing it up. the hell is going on here why can't I second plan this anyway so like this ship here it goes like this ship here you notice I go all the way to the bottom and then my fuel tanks are on the side I might die here <clears throat> and so you know I didn't really build this the way I should have I should have uh, increased this up and I should have squared the sides a little bit you know the sides are a little bit at too much angle and that doesn't help with the game, so it'd be better to square it off here. And I have very small transom on there, but um, just different style ship as well. But that that helps a lot. So like I think the the newer home ship has the new. No, it's cross-planing now. It just didn't like it at the time. 
but you notice like that the fuel is in here and everything else is much lower in this so this is a much earlier design and then like this one here this one has the new standard of uh, and you see how weight blocks um, this one has the that's why it was it was listing was I didn't have infinite electricity on and it has a counterweight right here much smaller counterweight because it doesn't have the crane as much and if we go in here you notice it's um, it has a, its fuel water tanks there again this didn't even move the section plane it's being obnoxious like see this is the cross section of the ship so you have um, water fuel and the, uh, you have the whatever the hell you call it here I think this is fuel here I think this is water water so I think this one is central fuel and then this has a counterweight there and then the upper level is that's where the engines are going is up a little bit so that kind of section planes that out and uh, this one does have the buoyancy glitch to get it high enough in the water Yeah, you can try to pick up Triton. It's not going to work. <laughs> All right, so let's work on that little uh, container mover thingy, I think. I want to be able to spawn it here because I usually have to go here. So let's let's show you the one I have. We'll see if it's worth redoing it. This can go off now. There we go. Yeah, so this is like one of the most um, compact that I can kind of do. What channel are you on, you scum? Where is the antenna? You can find the antenna. There's. So what channel I'm on? Six. We usually do channel six. So. so the whole point of this is you'd load this on Triton. Probably have a break on somewhere that I don't know about. Infinite electricity should be on. Yep. Okay. Let's see if those maggles are connected. The maggles might be touching. I don't think they are. Uh, let's see. Toggle button. I don't know what. I love it when I don't label anything. Rail break. Uh, it's rail break. Rail break should be on. Rail release. That should be on as well. Or not on. So I don't know how I set this up, but um, anyway, so this is kind of like the current system. I'm trying to think if there's anything I can do that's going to be easier or less or more compact than this. It's tough because the way the game sets it up, I need, see, the devs should have put grippers on containers, in my opinion. So it has to be too high, plus it needs a gap to be able to get it on. So it has to be taller than it should be. I think it's anyway. I, I, I tried pretty hard to get this to work. I'm trying to think. There's really nothing I can think of to get this to be more compact. This is kind of it. Let's, let's see what it. Play with this a little bit here. What the hell the brakes are. Why well, can't re release the brakes? Park break is six. Okay. Park break six. All right. So channel six and then park break six. All right. So this is about as compact as I think I can get it. You know, I need to be able to get this into. I don't necessarily need to be able to get this. I hate you, uh, little uh, stoppers there. Yeah, so this was built to be able to load this onto Triton, and then um, you know I can offload it pretty much Sawyer South and BVG. So th this would be needed at Sawyer South and BVG essentially. Try to get this as far as I can get it before I uh, run after it, because as soon as I run after it, the brakes come on. So. 
Au revoir. Au revoir. Oh, interesting. Yes, I, I'm gonna like I'm struggling to think about any way I can get this. Like I might be able to get the lifter component to be smaller. The problem is these freaking pistons are huge. I might might have luck with some linear tracks getting it more compact height wise. But the base is about as compact as I'm going to get the base. So, like, you go up to a container here, slam into that sucker. Bang, mother. Got to line it here. But this is about as compact as I think I'm going to be able to get it. You know, as far as the carriage, the uh, upper section, I'm sure I could probably get that smaller. I just kind of proof of concept, and then I kind of get... Got off track with this. And so just kind of line it up like so. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna press six, turn the brakes on. Then what you want to do is, it's backwards, isn't it? It's backwards. Um, here. Okay, and then what you do is you would uh, rail brake off. And then I think we toggle that. Let's see what it says here. Okay, that's release connector. So we, why am I in? Did I really click the home button? Ah, you suck. Don't do that. Don't do that. You suck so bad. Don't do that. Urgh. That's exactly what I didn't want to happen. That's another frustration point with this, is that can slide off, and then it's just a bugger to get it to hook back up. Absolute pain to get this to hook back up. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm going to have issues with this now. Uh, let's see, I might be able to get this to hook up here. I have to move a bunch of crap to do it, though, here. Let's see what we can do. I like some of the manual stuff that I have to kind of like muscle around. It's kind of fun to do. This is probably not going to work here. This is the pain point is this uh, grabber here just being tall. Just gonna show you how it works. I'm not gonna screw around too much here. Yeah, container size too big. I end up losing too much space. This is smaller than that. Like here. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. That's too big. This is much smaller. So let's see. So like this would be like that, and then how the hell did that not get put on the floor? Is the question I have. There we go. So this goes like this, and then I need to turn that on. We do rail brakes off, and then you manually push that. It will grab. Okay. And then we can um, want to lower the that. And I think that does the magals. And then we want to release this. 
And so you just jack the container up like that. All right, and then what you do is you grab the controller. We already have one, okay. And then drive under it like so, and we click that release button there. There we go, as you see it snaps. And then what I wanna do is I want to back this up as far as I can. And then we will go ahead and we'll set the brakes. And then what we want to do is um, lower these to like so. So it works pretty well. It's just um, needs some work on it. We'll leave that connected. Then I will re-energize this. Six. Oh, I put the brakes on. That would be why it doesn't want to slide as I put the brakes on. Okay. You put that in the center of gravity there. Oh, come on, come on, brake, you sucker. There we go. That goes there, and then we need to click the locks. Okay, and then this will go detach. So it's nice and compact, and this can load on a trite, and that was this whole thing's job. And then now you have a very maneuverable container mover that's in a very small footprint. The main pain point for me is that lifter is a little bit cumbersome, and like you saw, if it falls off, I have to go get a crane and fix it. But you can see I can, I can maneuver this pretty well. We'll see how far I can drive with this. It probably doesn't want to go too, too far. One thing I've been contemplating is it'd be kind of fun to do some multiplayer stuff and get some people from the community in, and we could go do some like mining together and stuff. I'd have to start a new world on it and get it set up, and it's kind of a be a, a laborious, long setup process, but that would be something that we think would be fun. The issue is like this isn't going to want to go down hills and stuff like that with it loaded all that well. It's pretty, but you see, it is still it it does a pretty good job at what it's doing. It's just that lifter is a little bit cumbersome. I can't think of a way to jack that container up with, um, <clears throat> you know, the problem is, you know, you make this so small, it doesn't want to do it. It could mag all the carriage and try to do it even com more compact, ideally. But you see, like, this is handling bumps fine. This works really well to move a single container. And so, like, this would be for Sawyer South if I need to offload. Like, I could do it. I can't do a double stack, really. But um, I might be able to do a double stack, actually. But, like, you would go and um, this would be able to be loaded on Triton and then be able to work containers. So it's kind of a fun system. It just needs to be, like, you see it as big old dial. So maybe I'll, I'll refine this is what I think I'll do. I'm going to go get a drink here. I can't breathe. I think my allergies killing my throat here. All right, guys, I'm going to throw you a quick ad. I'm going to go get me a coffee, and I'll be right back. I'm back. Read a couple of this chat here. Yep, yeah, we found a little bit of multiplayer. I 
It's it could be like herding chickens. I have to see. You know, the problem is I have to host it. I'm not gonna do a server, but um, I'd have to host it, and I have to be a limited number of people. You know, I, I hate to do it. I hate to make it like members only, but I might do that because I do need to restrict it in some way, and so I don't know. I, I kind of feel scummy doing it that way, but um, I might have to do something like that to uh, do it. But I'll I'll have to do some tests, see how it runs. If it's going to run fine, we'll be good. Um, let's see. I was, what was I just checking? I was just trying to check something. I meant to check. Okay. So let's uh, work on this a little bit. So this proof of concept works well. I need to finish it up. And so let's see if... But that's, you know, now you know how this works. So this is essentially this. So this is a jack unit. It will jack the container up. And there's actually some real life stuff like this where they jack the containers up and then they'll uh, put wheels under them. And that's where I get this, uh, where I get inspired by this. Let me see if I have um, intermodal wheels. There's a kind of an interesting um, set up like you can pull it with a van you go out you jack up the corners and you put in uh just like some caster wheels and you just tow it with a little van or something as you can see uh i don't see it i watched a video on it but um yeah i don't see it just i see tractor trailers doing it <coughs> all right so we need to work on this unit here i need to get this as compact as possible so i tried a bunch of stuff that i wish would work for example like one was essentially a piggybacking mechanism where you have a couple rotors. Again, the issue is this, is the pivots have to be small enough that they don't intrude on any of this area. And then because this squishes the wheels down so much, this rides on the ground. So you can't have this be pushed on the ground too much or it's going to stop hard. So I did like a piggyback system at first where it was, it would grab the bottom of the container and then it would flip it up on top. I could try a piggybacker again. Let's uh, let's try a piggybacker again. I want to get this as compact as possible. And ideally, you know, simple is safe. If I can get it, you know, I do like it where it's multiple pieces. It's kind of neat, but let's see if I can't get a piggybacker to work right. The problem is it's going to be wide enough there, and then... Theoretically, a piggybacker would work. I think. Let's try something here. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But um, I just want to test the piggybacking of it. So let me measure this. Come on, give me a proper measure, you scum. Eight, of course. Why is it got to be an even number? <laughs> you suck. You suck. Uh, let's see. We'll do it here. Whatever. I hate even numbers. It just makes it hard to figure out where you want to put the center point. And as compact as possible is what I want. So let's try there. Let's see. <clears throat> this section is not going to like it at, at some point, so I have to kind of deal with it but we're going to try this kind of proof of concept first and we'll see first first go generally is not going to work but we'll test it out let's see
imagine it disconnects from there. Right, because that's not connected at all. Yeah. There we go. See, it's, that is very light comparatively, so it really doesn't want to. That was the issue I was having last time. Why I ended up with the jacking system. I don't like magols, but I'll try to put some on the front and see if I can get this to pin down long enough to work. Yeah, see, it doesn't like magols because they are down low. Okay. Oh, come on, let's not do this where you slide all over town. Just, just land properly, please. Making my life difficult. Nice thing is I can move stuff around a little bit. That's like when realism gets in the way of uh, fun. Is it's like if you like you couldn't do like little stuff like this, just like bumping it. You'd have to like get things precise every time, and it'd be a little obnoxious like this. With especially with testing, it's nice to be able to just like push things like I can. <clears throat> okay. There we go. There we go. That seems like... It's not perfect, but that is at least proof of concept that as long as I have magols, I can attach the sucker. So that's not bad. This isn't going to work exactly the way it is, but um So I have some interesting ideas. All I need to do is jack the container up on top. If I can get it, I'm trying to think if I can get it just like a little bit off the ground, can I drag it on top is the question. All right, so that's that's actually pretty interesting proof of concept. So <clears throat> that is interesting to me. I want to get this as low profile as possible because I can't really load that into Triton with it that tall. <clears throat> I just count blocks. I'll redo it. Um, five. Okay. I'm going to run into issues here later, but again, I just want to see can it. Can it work? And then uh, if it can work, we at least know where to go from there. That's at the throttle. <coughs> Okay. So it's close. There we go. Look at that. It's pretty close. You know, I have clipping and stuff that I need to fix. This this is not gonna that's not enjoying what that's doing. But theoretically that's reasonably good. <clears throat> so I have a couple ideas of what I can do to fix this. Um but interesting. So this is giving me some interesting um, ideas of what to do. So. Let me read some chat here.
so another thought is uh, if I can get this up a little bit and then onto the rails, I can then use a wheel to rotate to push the container. So I want to try something here. Because this is doing pretty much the same thing of that driving, so I don't really need that. So like this would just power the container on to the uh, slide it on the rails a little bit. Trying to think how I want to do this. It doesn't have to slide very far, so I could do inboard tracks and slide the container connector on there. The issue is, see, the problem is the wheels stick out there. I could try a Magall connection system. Let's try that. I think that is all crap. All okay, good. So let's do this. Cut this. Ugh, again, everything's oversized, man. I got to do two ups on everything. I think we'll be all right, though. I hope. Um, <clears throat> like one thing I would love to see them do is take a pipe section like this. Okay, I should be able to click on this and have that. Put a composite node on there and have it have an internal valve. And so I should be able to take this and valve it because I was running into the chickadee problem is I need to put some valves on the tanks. It always likes to drain from the port tank first, and so the plane gets a little imbalanced. It's not a big deal, but it's obnoxious. And so ideally what I'd like to do is put a valve on there. Well, the valves require a 2 by 4 space. So to put a valve on either side, I need eight blocks of space to be able to put in the valves. If I had this and I was able to put a uh, composite or an on-off switch or whatever, I just need an on-off switch and make this an internal valve, a one-by-one -one inline pipe valve. That would be beautiful. So again, I should stop complaining about it and just make a feature request for the devs. But like that's something small the devs could get banged out in a week that I think would be a crowd pleaser. <clears throat> You know, so, uh, all right, so let's see. How do I want to do this? So this needs rotation, and it needs to go. Let's go right here. So I really like the mechanics of all this stuff. That's what I enjoy the most is working on the mechanics is a lot of fun to me. So it's like this type of stuff is, is what I like is getting the mechanics worked out of how to make something work. All right. So what's going to essentially happen here is this is going to mag all instead of we're going to screw these off. We're going to mag all. I'm not a huge fan of mag alls, but ideally you'd be grabbing it by its container ports. Because there, there are ports on the bottom and the front and the sides all around. Uh, it's kind of a standardized container for for containers IRL, and so it's kind of a cool system. But um, And so essentially what I want to do is I want to... This needs to raise up to the level of this, and I actually want this to tip. So I want this to lift and this to... Uh, let's see. This will tip up and then this will suck in and that will pull it on the rails. So let's, we need magals again over here. Put them right there. Which we'll do here. Space them out a little bit. Okay, magals there. So, not a huge fan of magals. They're just unrealistic to me, but, you know, can suspend. I can suspend disbelief a little bit if it works. All 
right, and then this is going to be go like that. And then if I take everything out of the middle, I can actually go down a little bit. So I do need to move a bunch of crap. So move all this crap for now. Not the end of the world. That radio radio's got to move too. Of course it does. Uh, that's fine. So they'll probably fit there fine. So cut out. Try to keep this compact as possible. All right. So now we'll go like that. Let's do a throttle. Okay, this will connect to the linears. I just hooked them up to the wrong thing already. Uh, linear, 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 linear. Okay, and then we want this will connect to the two pivots. I need another mag controller for now. All right, let's. Uh... All right, so let's check the wheels. So if the wheels are turning this way to bring it in, I want these wheels to turn the opposite direction. So I can't really see the wheel direction here. So the wheels are backwards here. Of how I want them. So let's cut these wheels. So I want these wheels to turn opposite. I don't know if these are necessary work, but they'll um, they'll help slide the container maybe. Okay. Let's let's play with this. See what it does. So let's go. Where are my wheels here? That's up and down. We'll go down a little bit, and then it needs to come out the other way, please. Okay, that's already a max extension there, so that needs to come out more. Right? Because of this one here. So we'll cut this. Cut, cut. And then we'll add a couple of these track segments here. that a little bit more rigid. All right, let's uh, give this a run. Why the hell is it not moving now? I didn't, did I, I didn't hook them up, so that would be why. <coughs> Yeah, hook up the new linear track bases or else it's just gonna act, act like brakes. All right. So if I can get it this compact, that's awesome. That's really gonna fix a lot of my issues here. Right, so we wanna get as low as possible, which is there. And then we want to start to lift. That's, um, so I wanna do activate the front mag alls. Okay, now we wanna lift. This is when it gets hairy because these don't want to work because the mass. It's slowly doing it. You can see it's slowly moving it, but it's probably not going to behave itself. The thing is, I might be able to power it across like that. See, it's eventually going to disconnect there. It needed to come up and over the wheels is the problem. The hell is that going past the the stops? I 
take a little pressure off of it there. Okay, don't go really ridiculous, please. Doesn't like being pushed up against the side of it like that. So, you know, like as I'm pulling it up, it's sliding up, which is working it. So I might be able to do a slide system, but it can't be with magals. It could be with uh, connectors. So I could kind of do a ramp up system, and so it will actually mechanically force it up. So that might work. That very well could work. So I have to kind of play with that. All right. All right, so let's try that. So I might be able to get that to work. So physically, I'm going to physically have it ramp up. Let's move this stuff here. We'll do that and then uh, make these uh, connectors so those are much much less likely to disconnect themselves so that's I need to do a That's fine. We don't need a release connector on there. All right, let's try this now. Why isn't this one a slide? Why don't you a slide now? Fine, let me slide you a little bit there. I'm trying to get you to work here. I have to get this very close. It should grab. There we go. Okay, good. There we go. Okay, so that's connected now. And now as I raise it, it's not going to want to raise, but it's going to ramp up a little bit better. So, Okay, good. So the front's connected now, so we're going to go full pressure on... Uh, we don't want full pressure. We just want a little pressure. And then we'll start to pull it up. And this should be ramping up and pushing us up and over. Okay, so it needs a little bit more than that. So let's cut out these segments here. <coughs> Don't need all these segments here. Don't need any of those segments there. And then I want to ramp up faster. So I need to get up and over these motors pretty quickly here. So let's do a... Come on, give me the thing. Give me a pain. All right, so that's going to help slide it up and over. It's going to push on these and ramp up. There we go. Okay, took the pressure off, dropped the front mags. Give it some rays here. Now it's misbehaving because it's touching the tires already. There we go, okay. So it needs a ramp before the tires, or else it's going to try to push under the tires. All right. <clears throat> we 
And hopefully that will ramp it up and over the tires. Why is it dropping in? Like, sometimes it drops it in beautifully, and then sometimes it drops it in violent as hell and slides all around. Okay, that's not bad now. <clears throat> Containers used to be much too hard to push, now they're a little bit easier to push. There we go, okay, good. Um, let's take some pressure off of this so that it... Try to get this to... Mag, you sucker, mag, you sucker. There we go, okay. A little upward pressure on this, and then we will start to drag it. It's going to ramp. There we go. Okay, so it needs another ramping here or else it's going to hit. So that the ramping system's working. It's What it's doing is it's using the linear tracks, the power of the linear tracks, to slide up over the blocks. And so that is, uh, that's working to do what we need. Just need to make sure it doesn't fall back down. Let's try that. Um, and then let's... Yeah, so we want it up a little bit more after that, so it needs to go up again. Really, there, essentially. All right, let's try this now, like this. If I can get it this compact, that is awesome, awesome, awesome. There we go. Okay, let's... Wrong way. Take some pressure off this maggot. Cause I can I can change it so that it's like not hitting right off when I start it, but <clears throat> all right, so it's ramping up now. There we go. It's it's fighting. It's trying. Put more of those linear track segments. That will help. There we go. Look at that. 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 Okay, beautiful. So that is working so far. All right, let's go ahead and um, – because what I'll be able to do is I'm going to start this in the vertical position. It will flip this way, so that will be fine. Let's do – what I want to do? Uh, disconnect this. Okay, let that come up all the way. And then um, – okay, so it's it's locked in place now. Where it needs it was. <clears throat> All right, good. So I'm making good progress with this actually. So we're actually pretty. We're doing pretty well here, shockingly. All right. So what I need to do is I'm going to do one more length on this. So it's five. Let's go six. Six, and then it's one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, okay. Yeah, so this is much more compact, and I'm digging on this than the other system. The other system was good, but it just wasn't super compact, and I kind of... I want a little bit more compact here where it's um, easier to store in Triton. What is this all about here? Cut that for now. These should be up. These should be verticals. So when this will, when this stows, this will lay all the way flat down in front, and it'll actually ride on top of that. So, <clears throat> all right, let's. Um, I don't know why I put the container so freaking close, but I did. Um, Oh, come on, man. All 
Nothing's easy. Yeah, I've got uh won't go past ninety now, you sucker. That's a that's a problem. God damn it. That is obnoxious. Doesn't want to go past ninety now. Whatever, let's stick it on and it should work, but it's not going to be my favorite. This is going to go to there. I can't get it past 90. And I can't read the position of the velocity pivots unless I put big ones on there, so that's all obnoxiousness. There we go, okay. I need to get this the magals in the front connected here. Because of that, I can't do it. So yeah, slowly doing it. We'll see if it gives way eventually here. There we go. Okay. All right, good. So now it's there, and what I need to do is I need to uh, do the sl the track slider brakes, which, if I remember, the rail brake is on. Okay. So hopefully this locks to the rail brake, and then I need to disconnect this. That will flip over. All I did was forget this, cut that. And then what I need to do now is... This is when the wheels could, these wheels could help me, so let's see. Come on, stop doing what you're doing there. I'm trying to do something here, guy. Can I power under this? Here's like I'm doing it. These wheels in the middle should be turning the ops away, trying to pull that container on. So, all right, good. So we're actually pretty close here. I think where I need to be. We're, we're making some good progress on the sucker. This is actually working pretty well. It's a little bit hokey, but it's uh, working. What is going on here? I'll check chat in a second. I see some messages. I'm just making progress with this now. There we go. All right, so let's see. We want to raise and we want to bring forward. I, if I increase the gear ratio on the tracks, I should be able to get more power out of this anyway. But um, it is working. It's just, uh, all right. And then I want to, there we go. And I'm going to go this way. Why are you not wanting to go up, ramp up now? Let's try this. Try to give it a little bit more guidance. So we'll go... I just saw what I need to do, and then I'm struggling. Um, it needs to be like that. That will help ramp it up on top of here. And why the hell are these wheels not working? Because I didn't hook them back up. Okay. I don't have any motors hooked to these. That's why they won't rotate. Okay.
try putting a see if I can do a slide wheel in there. It's not gonna go there. Huh. Try without it. Try skis, but we'll see. Give me this connector, please. Okay. Why are you doing? Why you must be having now, guy? This doesn't why well, does not want to slide up even more? I have another. Okay, let's try something here. <clears throat> Trying to get these to push on each other and slide up. Oh, come on. Stop hitting buttons. I don't want you to hit. Okay. There we go. That slides much better now. Bingo. Okay. All right, so that is on. Let's go... Should be able to shut rail brakes off and then power it up. All right, and then I'll hit the connector. Power up, drive, 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 you suck a drive. Catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up. Go the other way. There we go. Showing some promise here. I just have no. I'm, just, I'm pushing those wedges on the ground, which isn't helpful. All right, good. So I think I might have a notion of what to do here. So let's go cut this bottom set of wedges off. We don't really need it anymore because this track set's going to grab. So I'll let this actually try to keep the grab minimal. All right, let's try this. I need this to be able to fit in the garage of Triton, so that's another reason why I don't want to make it longer. I hate how it, every time I press the B, it changes the channel on this, even though I'm not selecting my controller. Okay. Very iffy on that. Right. Extend just a little bit. I don't really don't want to extend this very far. Give me the power. Give me the power. Why are the front wheels not rolling now? They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. Okay, they're grabbing. All right, so we're close here to having this work. 
Just need some grip. All right, so let's see. Starting to work. Starting to work here. Let me check some chat. All right, so I have an idea here. So what I want to do, wow, Boston accent came out on that one. Um, let's cut you here. Let's go track segment. I want track segment here. <clears throat> track, track there. Track, track goose. Play with the strength on this a little bit. Let's go 32s. Let's up the speed to threes. Try to get the strength up on this a little bit. All right, so let's see, add some weight on this, try to get it a little bit more power. Sorry, I'm being quiet, chat a little bit. I'm just getting close to getting this done. I just kind of want to get it worked on. Oh my God, I keep pressing the wrong button. How the hell are you not working anymore? It's too heavy now. The hell, man. That's too heavy for these two pivots. What the Christ? Uh, let's see. Now oh, it's crying, it's too heavy. Okay. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need to get, a, like, I need one rail segment, like, ahead of the wheel. Let's try some things here. I'm gonna move the wheel. I have to wheel, move the wheel back quite a bit. Let's try. How many would I have to cut to put a wheel in the middle? 
Maybe three segments. Probably three segments, I'm thinking. Need a little bit more power here, so. that the other option my thought of having the wheels try to pull that container on so we'll, we could try that as well we'll see <clears throat> but uh, we'll try this let me catch a bunch of chat here Yeah, it'd be kind of neat doing some multiplayer mining at some point. We'll have to see how I have to set that up. Oh, it does it? Yeah. It, new uh, submarine is heavy. Yeah, the trains are good ways to move it. Sometimes they do that from... If I'm going to move huge quantities, I'll go out and move that to FJ. You know, uh, if I do some smaller quantities, I'll just use the trucks. Oh, that's cool, yeah. All right, good. So most of just people talking amongst themselves. So that's uh, good. I was afraid I was missing too much chat. And so really, I want the rail break off. Okay, so now I have those wheels on, so I want... Um, my power, 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 give the power. There we go. Look at that. Nice, nice, nice. Almost. Come on, fight, you sucker, fight. Fight, fight, fight. I need the rail break is what I need here. We're getting close here to this work. I need those back wheels to touch down is part of the problem here. Sliding the container too much, but... Um... Oh, look at that. I almost... Oh, it's because it was hitting the door frame. There's a bump at the door frame, so it was hitting the door frame. That container would not be sliding like this IRL. It would sit still. That's part of the thing, is I need that to sit still. So, the other option I have is, let's try this. Let's try some running wheels to get this to push itself up. Problem is, it needs to be where the rails are. So this definitely helped, but let's try this. Let's go... Play with this idea for a second. Ride these wheels backwards. That's not going to help us touch the ground, though. I'm going to try to do some wheels to push the container on, so. <clears throat> give me the wheel. Give me the wheel, 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 please, please. Thank you. We'll have these tires running this direction. You know, we'll shrink the diameter down, so I just want them at the top of the rail so that... Grip, and I want high grips on here. 
The other thing is, I don't think the grips on these tires are gripped. I wonder if gripping the tires up will fix this where it's powerful enough. But he's pushing the container away, so that might cause problems. So let's see. I want these to be, where is it? Those are my drive wheels. These are going to be these. So these are my feeder wheels, and those are going this direction. All right, let's try this. So hopefully this grabs the bottom of the container so it's sliding. little momentum going on this, see if we'll pull it hard enough. There we go. Drive wheels, drive wheels, drive wheels. Come on, feeder wheel, get a bite, 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 get a bite. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> Come on, bite, 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 bite. Close, man. Getting there. Why this is like just acting weird is weird to me, but I don't know. Let's try gripping up the tires on this sucker. So let's uh Alright. So I'm gonna I'm gonna XML these the grip on those tires up. And hopefully that will give me enough grab to make it let me restart the music. Music is over. I need to go in here and save the fix the wheels first. So let's go grip to 99% on each. There's one right there. All right, good. So those are all saved up now, and let's reopen it. All right, so now the tires are more grippy. Hopefully that'll give me more bite to pull. The grip might be hurting the uh, the sliding over the wheel though too, so because it might be grabbing right there and not wanting to help. There we go. Yep, the the wheel was turning the opposite way. It had enough grip; it was pushing on the trailer, so that's fine. Um, we're locked here. Come on, give me grip! Give me grip! Give me grip! Huh. The extra grip, it's really not happy. Real break off. Okay, there we go. See, it doesn't want to spin, so it's just running out of power. Let's try to gear down the motors. Right. 
Let's try something here. I just need more grab in the middle. So. Yeah, that's not great. Um, should have plenty of power out of the one motor. So let's do this. Let's do zing, zing, zang. Yeah, working on a uh, this uh, compact container. And again, what are you hitting now? Oh, the wheels, of course. Ha ha ha! Well, let's get the wheels out. They're in the way of the tracks. Yep, by a big, by a big way. Jesus, kind of how I didn't figure that was going to happen. But we uh, put some gearing on them, so let's see if the gearing helps. I don't need speed, any gears. I hate how it changes the frequency every time I bring it back and I have to go through it. Absolute pain in the ass. There we go. Okay. Come on, give me the, move the wheels, move the wheels, move the wheels, move the wheels. Why? Working better without the gripped up tires. I hate these remote controls. You get stuck, it's just absolute pain in the ass. I have an idea. If I put this mag all like this, I can inchworm this sucker on there. So this mag all is doing pretty much nothing over there. Let's take this one here. Let's try something. This might work. Let's go ahead and I want to save. I'm going to save this and then I want to fix the tire grip. I want to decrease it a little bit. Add it at 10. I'm just going to move it down to 2. Okay. So this thing will inchworm now. Let's hopefully that inchworms it along with the mag also. Show you what it's going to do here. Again, change this friggin' controller over to channel 6 for the 900th time. Shouldn't have moved that all the way before I get it moving. There we go. Now it doesn't want to drag on board here. Starting to make it's starting to make some slow progress lifting it. Come 
on, dude. This was just grabbing up there. I just need it up. The Magal interfering? Shouldn't be. There we go. Okay, good. Alright, so now I need to leave this locked for a little bit, so hopefully I can make this work. So I need to do this. Why won't you rotate at all? There we go. Rotate. I had it going the wrong way. Okay, that, no wonder it was having issues. So that's not going to want to go under. There we go. Okay. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't misbehave, please. Inchworm this back like so. Bingo, people. Look at that. Okay. Then we will... Um... Why do you do that? Oh, rail break on. Let's try not to have the rail break on when I do that again. Okay, and then we'll go this way. Okay. Why does the rail break is on? Why is it slide? That's the question. Um, did I misconnect the front forward motors here? It pissed me off this motor business here. Motors are connected. Okay. Just get rid of the shit for now. I need the spin. So that inchworm is working. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the, the rail brakes on at first, which is not great. All right, so I'm going to leave this here. Rail brakes on. I want to uh, disconnect the connectors. Let it go all the way over. I want to inchworm it out. Go the other way. Go the other way. Come on, stop. And I'm out. What is, what is it hitting? It's hit something, I think. It's the wheels. The wheels forced the wheels forced it off. The rail brake off. So the rail brake was doesn't like the rail brake on because it's causing it not to want to slide on here. Okay, that was the rail brake lock, and it was eventually getting to the point where the rail brake couldn't take it anymore and was disconnecting. So I need to. I have like so many connections under here, too. There we go. Rail brake on. Okay, now we want to disconnect the mag all. What are you? Um, I, don't, I don't want this. Up, oh, go the other way, please, before you cause me problems. There we go. go this way, please, before you cause me problems. All right, good. That mag all is going to be probably in the way. All right, we'll take the... Okay. Why do you have less grip than you had before, dude? Like, the front tires are not moving. Make sure they're moving here. Are you friggin' able to move there? tires okay so I think we have one thing that might help 
is this. So this Magal can be turned this way, cut you, Jay, like this. So I'm starting to figure out what we need to do here. It's just being a little bit of an obnoxious pain in the ass. Um, but I don't mind it being a little bit laborious because this is something you don't want to have to do. You kind of do this if, uh, you know, the one base. Give me the wheel. Give me the wheel. Give me the wheel. going the right way okay I'm gonna move rail brake so I can just actuate it without having it in the way but it's still better than that other system I had so Okay, so we want to go up and in. Like, it, it loves to go up, it has no problem, and then it's like, nope, screw you. I had the brakes and the wheels. As soon as the brakes came off the wheels, it wanted to rotate fine, so that's good. All right, so rotor, these rail brakes are on. That's fine. Let's disconnect this. Don't come all the way off, please. Just do me a kindness. Oh, come on. Get fucked. Don't push it off, you scumbag. Stop. I wonder if I... Uh, yeah, I probably can't do it all with Magal. Okay, it's hitting this. It's fine. Guts can come out here for now. So I pretty much just want to level. I don't need it pulling. And then do rail brakes off. Drag it in as fast as I can. Then we'll go ahead and click it. That was helping get the wheels off. I wonder how well the container will slide up these ramps. Well, let's see. Yep, of course we're not on the right channel. Oh, fuck. That's what I hate about these remotes more than anything is it's like I have to use the B key to change the channel. It changes the channel every time I do it. Then I have to go in and 
not be too close to the build when I change the channel or I recall the build and have to do it all over again. I could do progressively longer rails. That's another thing to get it to drag further. Or fight that need. Breaks. There we go. Why are you not going all the way around? This is not rotating properly. Okay. Oh, okay, it's here. Okay, that's why I didn't set it to rotate all the way. All right. Let's try something really quick. Give it some power. Come on, get close enough, you scumbag! Come on. I need to I need to hook all this up with the remote so that the remote will uh, I can do it by remote because I have to like shut the wheels off. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're we're making progress here. Okay, the magol is not going to want to. There it goes. Magol's touching now. Beautiful. All right, we're getting close here, dude. Proof of concept starting to work here. Being a little bit obnoxious, but I'm starting to get it where I need it. Okay. There we go. Ha ha! Suck friggin' sess. <laughs> Suck friggin' sess. <laughs> uh, this has been a project. Hey, look at that. All right, so it, it, it's ugly, but the proof of concept works, and that's the main thing, is I need to get it where the proof of concept works, and then I can refine the design, but the problem is those friggin' ramps in the front are not going to be helpful. So I'm going to redo the, me the mechanism altogether, but we know that a bunch, that the proof of concept works, that I can, that I can do it. So it's just um, the inchworm technique works really well, I want to see if I can go full inchworm is the question. That's working pretty cool, man. It's just, you know, I need everything on the remote, so I'm not having to, like... Because I have to deselect the remote to be able to touch those other things, and that caused me problems. Okay. So let's go rail break. Toggle that. Go in. All right, so now you see it's now balanced. So now it's in the middle, so that will work better. So that's much more compact. And I can now easily load this on Triton. This can go on the deck of Triton, and it's not big and a pain in the ass. I just need to refine it. So not too shabby. Again, the main problem with this whole freaking thing is the devs chose to use these tracks on the bottom of the container, I think they should have put the grippers. If they put the grippers there, I think that would have been better. Because, like, this has to be extra extra tall because that, excuse me, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. I'm a walking here. But that is pretty, this is nice and compact. All right, so <laughs> let's save this. I'm going to save this as proof of concept. That is, uh, let's save this. All right, proof of concept. That is going to be there, and um, we'll kind of save that as the proof of concept. So I need to do some different things. So it's working. It's just not really all that much of a thrill to load. It's kind of a pain in the ass to load. 
So I'm trying to simplify it, so. Can I get more power if I can lift this? Probably not. Yeah, it stayed on channel six. All these are backwards too, which is not helpful when I'm tr like when I'm uh, stressed out rushing here when the connect all the stuff's backwards. There we go. That's much better now, power wise. Okay, so we want to rail brakes on. I'm going to go and add some, just a little bit over on that. There we go. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Right there, please. So this is, instead of this being on a throttle, there's going to be a push button where it either I increase it or decrease it, so that will work fine. It's just currently it's not going to like that. That doesn't want to grab there, okay. Oh, come on, man. I'm forgetting the controls again. All right, rail brake, mag all. So when it inchworms here, essentially I just need to alternate between. So I'll get these controls fixed up that they're not driving me absolute shithouse. So see, it's working well now. So that's fine. I'm starting to get the hang of it. And so that slides in, connect rail back, pulls it ahead, rail locks, bingo, and then uh, let's see. Get this lined up right in the center on the wheel there. CG problems okay and then this will be fixed so that this will either go zero a uh, speed forward or speed backwards Look at that so not too bad uh, it's mostly control issues now uh, so I worked the gear ratios one to four at five speed it's drag it's picking the container up fine so that's better three wheel uh, six wheel drive total is gonna be helpful I think to give it a little bit more power Get it out of there. I'm worried about these ramps running on stuff, but those wedges, they're pretty forgiving. I may run into issues with that, but it's pretty forgiving, so hopefully it's not too bad. Let's try something here. Let's try to get rid of these for now. Uh, because this is stronger now, if I can get rid of those ramps, I don't have to worry about them hitting the ground. So, all right. So let's go. Everything's backwards again, which is awesome. But we'll fix it. Okay, that's good. Rail locks are off now. This is strong enough to grab now. There we go. So I can lift it up now. And then I need the brakes to be able to slide. So 
wheel spill slide. This needs to go. Which way? Come on. Which way are you going there, guy? So now it's super strong. Let's go. Come on. Okay, this is actually, this is, this works pretty well now. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Just, just please, for the love of Christ, do something right for a change there thing. Ugh. I hate this thing so much. All right, we're gonna get this figured out here. It's these are all backwards, and it's just it's doing my mind a, a screwy. So there we go. All right, we're starting to get there. Yeah, I need to change these over so they're not doing this. Uh, they'll have a set speed. Go. Okay. Okay, good. So it grabbed finally at the end there. God damn it, everything's backwards that drive my mind nuts. <clears throat> Alright, good. All right, good. So I've got this pretty figured out here. So let's go ahead and um, let's not go there. I need to think about how I'm hooking up these microcontrollers now because I do not need to be at the mag all I need to worry about. So. Check this sucker out. I forget how to set the controller so things are... Are they all toggles? I can't remember, man. The controller is a pain in the ass to remember. The, see if I can find it here. Remote, I guess. Alright, uh, let's see. Very unuseful. Let's see. We test it with lights. All right, so I'm currently using WSAD. Six is my park brake, which I don't really need because if I let go of stop, so I can use up, down, left, right for my boom controls. All right. Let's see what I have for spacing here. I need to hide them in probably in the in here somewhere. Yeah. Don't have a ton of space for this microcontroller, but the only issue is that mag all turning over is what needs the space, but um figure something out. I think it's, the Magal probably could go up one. The yeah, Magal can go up one; it'll still work. So let's do that, and I can put the microcontroller in the center, and I don't care how big it is. So 
is this. Let's take this out. Of course, it's going the wrong way. That'll be fine, that'll fill the space. All right. All right, so that could be that big, no problem. Let me just update, check. Yep, so that could be that big without any issues here. Let me move this back in the middle. So I'll have a lot more automated controls here. Or not automated, they'll be on the remote. So, all right, good. So we want to go in here and... It was frustration simulator for a little while there, but we're uh, making progress now. All right, so three is going to be up down. That will be the boom. So I can't turn these sticky. That's the problem. See, I, I don't have the option like I do on a seat to change them to sticky, which is obnoxious. Trying to catch up with chat. If you're talking to me, do uh, at Captain Carkles, please, because you know if you guys are talking amongst yourselves and then you do an at Captain at, at Captain Carkles there, it uh, makes it so I can see it. <coughs> yep, working on a container handler. Yeah, thirty-two wasn't working. Uh, a quarter was working. You can change the key for switching channel. Yeah, I know. Just haven't done it. Container B schmoo and test with the electric connectors. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know it's the same. The issue is I can't configure it the way I kind of see it. I can't change it to sticky or not sticky. I have to then go in there and screw with it. Yeah. So, like, for example, if I use three, there's no way for me to make... I can't change the sensitivity to 100% reset, so I can't turn it into what I want. So I probably will use. Let's see what I want to do. So four is going to be running. So this is going to be number output tracks. Me number output arm. Oh, lovely! I've got this right in my spawn area. There we go. Move that down. All right. So the arm is. Uh, see, they're all reset too. That's freaking obnoxious when they're reset. So I have to do the arm as uh, with buttons. The track is fine as reset. That's going to be four. Make sure that works so I want it first. So I have to do it piece by piece so that I get this connected the way I want it. What's going on? Why are you driving me? I put a trim in, that's why. Okay. Screw up here. It's gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> Why the hell won't that work now? Channel four is um that's why. Raise what I want. Okay. okay, there we go. It's moving. 
Okay, so that's working now. I need to work on the arm. Track release. Oh, I already put these on. Okay, track re okay, track release, track brake, five, six is park brake, release. So what I'll do here I think is let's see. So is there, do you guys uh, know if, so the occupied is normally 32. Does 32 work on the controller? That's the question mark. So let's, let's test it out. So let's do. Occupied. Okay, so as long as I have it triggered, I get an occupied signal. That's good. Okay, good. Beautiful. That's something I can use. So what I'm going to do is the parking brake is going to go on whenever I'm off the controller. So if it is not occupied, put on the parking brake. Put in the parking brake. So if it's not occupied, put in the parking brake. Not occupied. Put in the parking brake. There we go. All right, so that is going to be good. So that will, whenever I get off the remote, it will auto brake it, which is fine. Put on the hard brakes. I can still uh, do the uh, variables. So. That is that done. Arm is going to be, I'm trying to think what's easiest for me to do. Well, probably one, two. Okay, so one, two. If I could grab the one thing I want. Okay. See, again, they're all stuck at toggles. I can't configure my remote control. See, the problem again is I can't configure this thing, so I can't make it reset at 100%. I also can't switch it from toggle to push, so that's obnoxious. Yeah, so you can't use spacebar properly. What they should have just made it was a seat where if I click on the remote control carriage, it allows me to configure that. I can't configure it. Yeah, you can't. How's it going, XORUS? Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't configure them to be toggles or pushes. I want these to be pushes. I can't. I, they have to be toggles, which is obnoxious. <clears throat> so that's that part's obnoxious. So it's just it's obnoxious. I don't have the the same controllability that I do on the. Uh, seat it, they, and they could have that was something they could have easily done is made it so that it's controllable like the seat.
let's screw with it with this. Come on, dude. What the fuck? Didn't really aggravate me, this. Starting to get tired of this. Alright, take a break in a little bit here. One and two. Okay. Enabled negative 5.01. The increment just too small? No, it shouldn't be. It should be 100 presses to get full. Okay, what the hell? One. Count up arm. Let's just double check, make sure I hooked it up. Could have been something stupid looking to put the right channel on. Brain's starting to mush, so. Arms there. Okay, let's spawn it. Alright, we're channel six. There we go. It was just me, uh. Me clicking it went. Oh, fuck. It needs to go full range of motion. Alright, good. So now it auto brakes whenever I get off the controller, so that'll just be my parking brake. Okay, one is up. There we go, okay. I don't have the mag all on there, so that's not a huge deal. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I need to work on some of the other stuff. All right, good. So that's good progress. So I'm making progress on this, which is all we can ask. A little bit of progress. All right, so let's see. I want to do... I don't think I ever need track release. There's no time I need track release because I, want to, I can just slide it off the end. So I don't need track release. So we'll get rid of that. I do need track break. So one and two are occupied. I have three, four, five, and six left. So, yeah. All right. So we'll do three and four, I think. That way it's just easier for my hand to deal with. And so track release will become mag all. Okay, there we go. Now will be four. Track break will be three. Okay. You know, I wish they would just switch these to presses because it's a piece of cake to make a microcontroller to turn a press into a toggle. It's very hard the other way around. You know, and if you if you make all your axes buttons, it's easy to add uh, up-down counters to make them into resets or stickies so it's it's just that would be a better way for them to do have done that all right. so let's see. not good all right good there and then um i'll walk over we'll hook it All right, so it's going to be one and to the right. Drag it right on up. I can remember what I did. Um, I should be able to see. So I think it was... Oh, Magal's gone. Getting annoyed, dude. Getting annoyed. I put move and I moved the micro girl. I killed the Magal. Not the end of the world, just stick it here. That'd be why. This panel is not going to have to be this long either, but um, right now it is. I'd like to put some weight blocks in the center too, but don't want too much weight because I need this to be able to rock and roll and move around. All right. I didn't do the track brakes either because I was distracted. All right. Break, break. 
Brake, brake, brake. I didn't have all the brakes selected either, so. Yeah, that's fine. And then let's see, so that's good. Magol is here. So we should be able to do most of this now. But I like its footprint. This should be really compact on Triton, so that's good. I have the two key selected, that's why it's doing it. So. Alright. Flawless pulls it up now really nice and easily now. As I say that, it wants to misbehave now. Alright, what the hell is track break? I can't freaking remember. Three track break, four mag. Yeah, probably. Go, Magol. Come on, give power, give power, give power, give power, give power. Okay. Okay. So what I need to do is move this centrally, and then I need to make the boom height the right height. So let's do that next. Cut you. Let's get a measure on the sucker. How long it is. It is what? 14. Let's make it 15 long. Okay, we'll make it 15 long. So we'll say 8. Okay, perfect. going to be able to shrink a lot. It doesn't need that much space, but I just want to have it in case I need it. It's a, uh, is this a Lorne song, I think. Acid Rain, I think. Lorne Acid Rain. Good song. Ah, oh, you suck so bad. That Magol, dude. This doesn't want to be had. <laughs> yeah, I suck. Right, we'll move the Magol separately. Gotta be particular there, Magol, don't you? Alright, and so then I need to measure this sucker off, so it needs to be uh six to the ramp. So it is currently four, so I need two up. That will fit there, and then when it flips over, will it hit here? Yes. So. Let's cut it again. Let's just go to there. Make it a little bit extra long. All right, let's play with this. Why are you grabbing my foot? The cat's grabbing my foot for some reason. It's remembering, like, from last time, too. It's like leaving things connected. Okay, good. Right, so, want one and in. 
So the, the arm is longer now, so it, it's going to need more torque to get it, but I'm going to try to slam it on. So make sure one selected. There we go. And I'm going to drive it into it, see if I can't get it to force it up. Ah, of course. Going to have problems here. Okay. Stop. Just stop. Yeah, I disconnect, and now it wants to work. <laughs> get, get out of here, son. All right, there we go. All right. All right. So that's at the end of the fuck. That can't be that long. It's gonna run into problems being long because then it um, can't go far enough back. So I have a couple things I want to do here. Let's cut this down. Try there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It needs to be at least six. So six there. Let's do that. All right, let's try this now. There we go. Now we're snapped up. Okay, so I want to press four to turn the uh, mag all on. I want to press three to lock the rails. Okay. One. Okay. Oh, come on, you're not gonna, you don't want to mag now? Is the mag on? No, it isn't, okay. Now it's on. I don't want to grab it. There we go, okay, good. Pull, 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 you bastard. Okay. Three, shut the track locks off. It's got more clipping than I'd like. It's definitely clipping, and I'm not a huge fan of clippage, but working so can always be improved later oh don't you dare come on three three press three quickly before you forget what buttons to press <laughs> okay there we go three press three to shut the brakes off of the tracks okay why are you having problems now with that there we go okay so press three and then four and come back. Okay. So now it's locked to the tracks and we're inchworming it in. Okay. So press four, three and pull it back out. Okay, good. There we go. Okay. What the hell, man? Why does it do that? Why does it jump? Okay, it's the track locks. Magol on, please be on Magol. Come on, come on, come on, grab the friggin' thing. I can't tell. See, I need them lighting on this. It's some indicators. I don't have space for indicators on there either. Right. I need like a, a light mask to tell me what's on, what's off, because it's challenging to know what the hell is going on. So let's. So for now, I'm gonna just throw some on here. I 
can't really put them because of the tracks. So the track locks, which I didn't do on the other side, which I should probably do that. Okay. The track tra track break is going to be that, and then we have mag all will be four. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I have no interest in using stuff for the workshop. I'm just going to. I like making my own stuff here. Appreciate you telling me something. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead, go one and in, raising it up. Magal's on, we want that off. Okay, Magal's off. All right, uh, track brakes need to come on. They're on now, okay, good. Uh, let's see. I need to go up, disconnect it. See, it it, it disconnects the brakes when I unhook. So what we'll do is that those need to default in the lock position. So let's do that. Come on, give me the controller cursor, whatever you call it. All right, arm track brake. I know. Do you, do you want to eat again? Cat's after me again. It's bugging me for something. You just ate, bud. All right, so that will lock the track brake when I'm not on there either. So, so track brake's locked, as you can see. Get on the right friggin' channel, you dope. Okay, uh, track brake needs to be unlocked. So what I should do is it should automatically let go of the, no. No, that won't work because the mag all system. Okay, three, okay. There we go, and then I wanna go. All right, so now it's holding it better because it's keeping that on when I'm disconnected. So that works better. Okay. Stop, stop moving, stop moving, stop moving there. Okay. There we go. All right, so that's more. I don't like the clipping of the wheels there, but I don't know how to remedy it either. I could get rid of that last set of wheels too and spread the uh, angle a little bit. Okay, so window three, four, pull in. Stop it. Okay, and then I want to do four, three. Come on, come on. What are you doing? Power it in for a little bit here and get it grabbed better. Okay, good. Lock it. Okay. There we go. All right, good. So let's go ahead and... Move in with this. Stop it there. Four, three. The Magal is just being inconsistent, grabbing it. It's really pissing me off. It's like sometimes it wants to grab it, sometimes it doesn't. It needs to like go out one block, I think. It needs to be out one more block to consistently grab it all the time. Like there, it's grabbing, so, all right. Magal, I think, needs to come out one block. And then let's shrink this panel up here. I can't imagine we need more space than that. All right, let's grab you.
I won't the arm move now. Because I moved the panel node and it disconnected it. Alright. Shocker that. Uh, where is it? Arm. Tracks. Occupied. I don't need that to be hooked up. Okay, make sure nothing else got screwed up. I don't think so. Those are the only nodes I moved. all trying to grab. Why are you grabbing on stuff, dude? It's left on from the last time that I used it. Okay. Yeah, it's left on from the last time I used it, so that'd be why. So it's like it's remembering what the hell I did last time, so. You must, they must have that in there because, like, the trim, the only way to get rid of the trim is if I do it manually here, so. Oh, come on, dude. Don't act. Don't overreact. Just... Oh, God. Fuck it. There you go. Uh, three should be off. Three should be off. Okay. You're just gonna absolutely just not do anything now, you scumbag. Come on. Okay, let's do three. Okay, good. Three is locked up. Okay. Okay, good. You sit there, just behave yourself for two seconds. Three. Take a break from the sucker in a second. It's pissing me off, but um, Reconnect all the nodes that just disconnected. Drive. But it's starting to make good progress here. It's just the fine tuning. It's kind of a pain. And I'm starting to get there. I'm just tired and it's starting to bug me. So I'll get off in a second. I'm going to leave this in a reasonably complete state. That needs to move. That was the, one of the whole impetus of doing this was to move this friggin' thing. So the mag all got deleted. They gotta fix that. Anything I really need there? No. Okay. So you take all that microcontroller there. Gonna get a um, get a hook right in the middle, probably here, for the uh, lift of it. So let's grab a mag all. Put this on for the 900th time today. And then I want a rope. Okay. And that's how we'll lift it on to Triton. Hook up the mag all before I forget for the 50th time to do that sort of thing. That's not it. Where is it? Mag all right there. Okay, good. Let's test it. Switch to channel 6 for the night hair time. And the arms disconnected again. Thought I just hooked them up. Arm. Arm. Remote channel got disconnected. That would be why. Where is the antenna? That would be what happened. Okay. Move nodes around and it friggin' flip flops up. Okay.
three. Tractor. Tractor one. Oh, you are trying my patience there, guy. There we go. Okay. Saw me coming and it got it got scared. Okay. So now the only thing that should attach is the container. Bingo. Okay, stop. Three. On. Okay. Three. Four. Inchworm. Alright, so we're working now. Four, three. Drag. Beautiful. So it's working consistently now. So. All right. All right. So three, four. Inchworm it in again to get it to the center position. So this is working well, and it's um, you know, it just took a little bit of uh, testing to get it there. All right. Good. So now we are all set, and this is running. So beautiful. I keep pressing the wrong key, maybe. Oh, I kept pressing four, and it was dragging it. That's what it was. Okay. So what I could eat? Oh, yeah, I don't want to do that. So, all right. So this is good now. So I think this is pretty much. You know, this needs to be dressed up a little bit, but it's working. And you know, I just need to practice with it, and then I'll get better with it. I might be able to make it even smaller. That's kind of my goal. If I, because the back two wheels really don't do too much. If I can get rid of them, that would be nice, but it does probably help it not sink on the ground as much. But this is nice and uh, easily controllable now, and I can, uh, you know, I want to be able to fit it in the garage on Triton. So I'll check up with some chat, and then I think I'm going to take a break. My mind is mush at this point. So if this is working really well. I'm happy with it now. It just frustration city for a little while there. All right, good. Let's check some chat, and then I'm going to take a break. Yeah, the road, you know, I just wish they would fix this uh, up. You know, this is something that they could easily do, so. You know, I got two, way too many windows open. All right, so, like, for example, the, uh, let's see. So, like, here, for remote. see and so like if I click on my seat I can go in here and I can configure all this shit I can go in here I can be like okay I want you to reset 100% that turns out into an A button and a D button that gives me two more buttons that's what I was looking for because ideally I would like to move the arm with left right but I need it to be buttons I need to be left right buttons can't do that uh, I don't have the trigger as toggleable I can't go in here and make these pushes and so all I wish you could do is you click on the remote that I thought I just put in the deck that I didn't. I did. It's right here. Okay. You know, you should be able to click on this remote here and do the same thing as a seat. But you can't. And that sucks. So, I, you know, instead of complaining about it, I'll put up a post and uh, see if the devs will do it. All right. Let me go through the chat here. And uh, then I think I'll get off. I'm, I'm tired. So it's uh, starting to make me grouchy. How's it going there, Sparky? Yep. Yeah, I know they're toggles. I I've said a couple times, Exorus, they were their default toggles. So. Now, Anton, not doing that. Set up the way I want it to be set up. All right. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate you. And uh, there'll be a career build series out tomorrow. Build Challenge Golf is going on right now. You've got uh, a few weeks for that. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, I don't think so. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.